Welcome back to Bridge Bricks, day two. We'd like to take you around for the second half of the show. Magnus, Hello. can you show us your Hogwarts build? Sure, it's here right behind me. It's about uh, the whole setup, about 100,000 bricks. Uh, it took about nine months to build it all. But a massive effort by, by me and, uh, and Russell, and we were very pleased with the outcome. Yeah, this may be the last time it's showing as well, is that right? You've shown it a few times uh, now? You want to keep her? I, I think I'll keep it for a little bit longer. Nice. So uh, watch out, it, it might come back um, at some point. All right, give us some details. What do we got? Uh, pretty much everything. We put in about uh, 50 different scenes from uh, Harry Potter uh, throughout the display. Um, Let's cut so, a loop, yeah, take yeah, us so, around on the tour. Yeah, so, so we, um, we, we got a bit of London. Um, in London, you got uh, King's Cross Station, train arriving, um, it goes through um, Diagon Alley, there, there's some private drive, um, it arrives at Ho Hogsmeade, students get off, they can catch the uh, boats across the lake. Now, I say you've shown this a few yeah. times, but the detail yeah. is growing every time it comes out. It's, yeah. The attention to all of the movie references is astounding. And the sheep in you, as a new element that Legos put out recently. And you dropped them in there, not, yeah, not, not just one or two either, you've got a few sheep. Yeah, yeah, uh, we, we try to keep adding to it as, as we get new figures. So there, there are some new details, two or three new scenes we've added. Keeping it fresh. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, it did kind of keep evolving and then, yeah, uh, some, some things came in slightly rebuilt or adjusting colours and other things. It's also nice to design. see some movement from the Technic side of things for the Horntail and Harry Potter moving up the back there. How long did that take to figure out the movement? Uh, a long time. Um, there were some ideas floated on Facebook and other places around creating that movement. But the weight of the uh, dragon really makes it challenging. Um, so, so there's a lot of trial and error. Uh, Russell is the master of that creation, and it wasn't really till we figured out to how to add a, a counterweight on, on at the bottom of the dragon that it actually could work for more than a few seconds without breaking. Yeah, right. So it gets a pendulum happening. Yeah. yeah. The great thing about your castle is the open back view of all of the rooms, and they're they're all full. They're, they've all got different elements from the movies going on it's uh it's fantastic yeah it's uh it, it was uh, the intention from the beginning i mean uh, the castle looked great from the outside but but when you look at it inside it really comes to life so um and and so wanted to have that ability to look into the castle all the uh, scenes and then the histories and we we know from the movies um so we we kept two of the sides of uh, when viewing it uh, to be this cross-section view uh, so you can see um, the classic make, cutaway. Yeah, the classic cutaway. Um, so um, yeah, but you really need a, a good space like this one to display it, uh, where you can show it from all all four sides. Absolutely, that's probably yeah. the best thing about our show this year. We've upgraded to that new space, and and it allows people to walk around all the displays, and you get yeah. a more immersive feel, don't you? Yeah, yeah, because it it, it, it does take up a lot of space, um, and and you really need that. Uh, for a, uh, for a display like this. Now especially uh, while well, we're filming early at our special sensory session, but uh, during the day it gets quite crowded around your build. It oh. can be three people deep at times, can't it? Yeah, it, it's uh, sometimes, which I, I guess unfortunate in some experiences because people don't get as close there as they might have liked to. But, but yeah, we, um, we um, try to uh, still engage with as many as we can and then tell them uh, Tell them the stories that they can find here, and and, and there are so many passionate people here that, that, uh, that know uh, Harry Potter inside oh, out. Yeah, 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 even better than me at times. We've so. actually just had a little girl come have a look at it, and she's got a Dobby soft toy. So of there you course. go. <laughs> and, and and quite a few people actually came here and then said, "Well, this is the reason they came to the show." Absolutely, the 360 degree immersive experience is quite impressive. And how long does it actually take you to set up the entirety of Hogwarts on one of these days? It, it, it is a, a, a big effort. It, it is built modular, um, but the um, it it's, uh, still takes a long time. So, so the process of unpacking, uh, setting up the base, adding the buildings, adding the trees, minifigures, uh, train track, testing everything, 
took about uh, it took two people eight hours uh, to set up uh, on the Friday. So uh, yeah, big effort. Excellent. So, Alrighty, well, thank you very much for running us through it, Magnus. Yes, great, Magnus. It's the highlight of the show. Appreciate it. We're going to run on to the next scene and keep on moving. Um, you want to go a quick quick picture of Russell? Russell? He's the other master behind the scenes of Hogwarts. Thank you very much for being uh, the, the true gentleman you are and, and the stalwart of the club. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Flattery will get you everywhere. You, you've done marvellous builds all through the, the 10 years of Brisbane and are you enjoying this culmination of, of our peak so far? Well, I think so. Long way for, since Mount Cravat, 10 years ago. Yes, uh, up 10 times, I think we say, for our 10 year anniversary. Yeah, yeah. It's and um, great. Yeah, the crowds are still there and yep. Yep, everyone loves Lego. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's get on to Atlantis and have a quick look at this table over here. You're away. Thank you Thank very you much. Work in progress, I believe. Choi's built here, uh, a model of Atlantis. If anyone's familiar with the... Stargate series, this one. Uh, I have a personal little love for this. In fact, I have uh, a Stargate-inspired tattoo. Uh, one of the things that I am quite interested about this build is the fact that its scale is a micro-scale sort of build for most of the details here. And he's also used some uh, nice part usage to bring our favourite term back from yesterday, integrating some of the bionicle parts uh, with the system bricks, uh, which is very, very cool. And built off stud as well, that, that's a highlight of uh, these Stargate type of situations where it's not all square, is it? And building those kind of elements in can be quite challenging. Absolutely. And this special segment, we're here with Tom and his dad and him have come to show at uh, the Brisbane show. What have we got here, Tom? Um, so we have Geonosis. My, me and my dad, we have built this um, because for our love for Star Wars and the Clone Wars especially. We have the old dropship. We also have a, a finder fig, so if you want to find the fig in the video or if you come here. We have custom dropship, not dropship, gunships. We have got different battles between the clones and the, um, the droids slash separatists and Genosis. We have, we've got Jedi Bog, obviously, got to represent. He is a fan favourite, as is that old dropship. Yeah, yes. We have a display case of 145, I'm pretty sure, minifigures. And over here, down here, we've got a little side mock that I have built with my custom commander who you might think is Neo, but there's not. And my my custom Legion slash battalion with Fox. I'm getting a Camino guard sort of feel from the Grey Troops at the checkpoint there. Was there any inspiration from those guys? Uh, no, I watched this YouTuber and he he did something with Grey Arms and Figs and I was like, that's pretty cool. I don't want the white troopers, you know? Now the final thing I've got to point out, being a Star Wars fan, is at the bottom of that case I might be able to see, I think, what I believe is the Cloud City Boba Fett. Yes, yes. That, that, and is, Leia, that, and that is Power. all the Bob, that is all, not all And Lando. Yes, that is all the Cloud City figs. And so the, the, the first... Um, first level is basically first uh, New Hope, isn't it? It's, it's the New Hope, and then we come down, we've got... It's just the... The order that they, the movies came out. the movies came out in. Oh, and then we've got on the second bottom layer, we have all the Hans and then all, all the Lukes. And then on the bottom layer, we have the sequels. And obviously, there's not many figs because no one likes those movies. Well and said. Then you have the prequels, and then yeah, Cloud City, or OG Cloud City, which yes. Quite awesome. the collection. Thanks, there. Tom. That, that's a really intense display, and you guys are right over all of the details. Um, Thanks for coming along to our show and displaying with Brisbane. And the orange looks great on the black table. It yes, does. It you. really pops, doesn't it? Because that colour is quite hard to get. What do we call that colour? Sand so we, orange? We put a sand orange. <laughs> Who knows? There it's, we go. It's very genos genosis. Yes. Well, well done, mate. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Alrighty, let's go find somebody to talk to. 
I am seeing Duncan over there. It's his first show. He's done awesome, so we're going to go visit him. Hey, Duncan, you want to come up and say a few words and let us know what your builds are? Welcome to Hello. Bruce Bricks TV. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, at the back here, we've got a, uh, a train boiler shed, sort of an engineering workshop of sorts. Um, so you've got the gantry at the front and an undercover tool area to, to pull apart the trains. Um, and then a couple of trains based on sort of classic English uh, designs. We're going to so get you into the train group part of Bridge Bridge before you know it. I love it, I love it. So just looked up one picture online for each and then tried to work out how I could recreate Excellent. that. Excellent. Um, and this stunning tree, look how organic that is. Yeah, thank you. This is the, um, the thickest forest tem temple. So, right. Uh, a strangler, strangler fig. Um, and it's based off a place in Brisbane that I go camping, obviously the, the, the tree itself. And then the, the temple just sort of spiraled from there, as you guys know. You just keep working on things. And, yeah, you only you need a seed of inspiration point. and the imagination That's runs right. free. Give and, us a look inside at the details. Yeah, so it, um, it all comes apart. Ah, oh, look at that. A little treasure room on the top. And then it sort of deconstructs to a, a, a tea room. And then the reveal. As you go further, you've got the, the living the living quarters of the temple. So Ah, almost a Roman bath in there. Yeah, so you've got the the, the bathroom, workshop, uh, bedroom with all the little bunk beds. Yes. Had to use some of the cool printed pieces as um, Duna covers and then a, a, a working kitchen as well. Oh, so. thanks for the breakdown. No worries. I'm getting pretty good at it. I've been doing it a little bit, so. Good job. Thank you very much. You. Let's move straight on to Ed. How are you going, Ed? I'm well, Nick. How are you? Just tell us what you've done here. It's a bit of a pop culture 80s sci-fi, is that right? It is, yeah. It's a cyberpunk street scene. It's inspired by uh, Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, um, cyberpunk novels. Fifth Element. Fifth Element, very much, yes. So it's set in the far-off future year 2000, as seen from the 80s. <laughs> Yes, uh, that with, seems so far away when it was that's right. back in the day. With the low down street scum below and the high up corporate scum in their buildings and a heist gone wrong as our hero is bursting out with the stolen plans. Ah, from the armour. Yes. Little, now, little play on words there? Not really, it's just a word I could make with the pieces I had. Nice. <laughs> and, and coming up with something very original but uh, that is still recognisable, you know, like there's, there's those elements there that, oh, I think I've seen this before, what movie is that from? And, and yet it's, it's just your imagination yes, running wild. Yes, lots of different inspirations, lovingly stolen from all of them. Yes. I'm a big fan of the uh, flying copter sort of design here, Ed. Yes. Uh, the th choice of colours is interesting. That's a newer Lego colour. How did you um, pick that? I... Um got those from a friend set with a magic trick and some horses in it that uh, my girls very uh, sweetly gave me for my birthday and uh, I went with the bright light yellow highlights because of the color of the rings and I was so pleased with that that I bought two of them and built another one. And, so there we go. And the girls got the ponies and, shop. and the dollies so there was a good deal all around. But yes. let's yes. segue straight into your daughter's build then. Yes. She's not here today. Elizabeth can't be here today. Right, so talk us through Elizabeth's build. This is, this is a winning build of, of the display weekend. Yes, Elizabeth built a wizard's tower island with the wizard has kidnapped the princess to take her magical power to cast his spells. The island has four zones, desert, ice, jungle and water and plenty of uh, mermaids and octopuses and dolphins and the knights who are coming to rescue the princess have been distracted by the gorilla's banana harvest and are <laughs> slipping over on the banana skins over here. And the four quadrants, of course, jungle... Jungle, um, ice, desert and water. Nice. Uh, and the ice dragon is, I think, defending the princess because the knight is trying very hard not to get chopped. Right. All Elizabeth's work, she designed it herself and built uh, it herself. I can see the Lego love runs deep in your family. It does. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ed. You're very welcome. Morning. Morning. How are you going? I'm uh, getting there. What, what, what have we got? Run us through. I know I've okay. talked to you earlier. We've got Chinese New Year celebrations being interrupted by a bit of chaos unleashed by the by the monsters of the well, mon haunted mansion. Of, yes. the, of the haunted mansion. Uh, not much more beyond that, to be honest. No, no, it's great. No, I see how you uh, combine those two 
that completely opposite elements into one single scene and it comes together beautifully. And to be honest, I didn't put all that much time into this one. This this was nothing about, this was four base plates about two weeks ago. Good job. So Looks very Ackley like from the uh, exactly episode right. two scene. Exactly right. Ah, a little bit of inspiration uh, four there. Four of the uh, Creator 3 and 1 dinosaur sets. Yep. Following a set of instructions. There we go, we talked about that YouTube. yesterday, didn't we? How yes. you combine, buy multiples of the same set and you can come up with your own creation. Uh, it's fantastic. It's Thank not just much. us, lots of people do it. Yes. It's about the only original thing here <laughs> that I, I will claim credit for are some of the trees. Uh, and <laughs> trees are, are a great element in many builds and everyone has their own version of, of doing those. So, yeah, next. Let's have a look, Glenn, at these uh, record covers that you've produced. What, what's going on here? What's Run us through on? them all. Um, so and you start with your name, though, first. Glenn. Glenn. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you said, they're album covers, which is great seeing crowd reaction when people are like, what are those? Yeah. Especially kids. Some know, some don't. Um, so for the punches playing along at home, let's go through. What do you got? Uh, we've got some Coldplay. We've got The Clash, Demon Hunter, Opeth, Regurgitator, U2, Silverchair, Eskimo Joe, David Bowie. Pink Floyd, Johnny Cash, Powderfinger, The Eagles, Velvet Underground, Led Zepp, and uh, Fleetwood Mac. Awesome! All, all basically at 32 by 32 pixels. And the ghetto blaster in the background. Correct. Yes. Now another thing that we have at Briz Bricks is our, our 501 First Legion, so you can come along and get photos with all of the uh, characters, and they vary day by day, so that's always fun for the kids to come along and grab a photo with. But we're going to focus on the Lego and we're going to do another lap of the next tables. Let's go over here, Harrison. What's happened on this corner? I think you might be aware of the quality of this build. I might know a little bit about it. Uh, this is a randomly planned, uh, very last minute uh, in terms of its build. It was actually done on Wednesday and Thursday, right before we set up on Friday. It's three people. Uh, one is my good friend Claude. We saw his pirate ships in yesterday's video. He's built the lovely fort. In the middle section, the farm section, which has an awesome grapevine uh, built at the back, is his lovely wife Jolene. And the right hand side here is actually a very uh, sort of Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man Chest inspired island build to uh, cap it all off. That was built by me in four and a half hours and basically has every Pirates of the Caribbean minifigure ever created by lego in that build i know we've so got some lego. lego lovers that were only coming to the show if we had pirate lego so our ambassador did mention that, that so there we go <laughs> now this next build i think you should almost get behind the table here because this is your highlight reel it kind of is uh, and to be fair since you uh, get up for the day it will which probably is explain kind of... the questions from yesterday of why they were hosted their video by indiana jones uh, it is because my build is of course uh, every LEGO Indiana Jones set LEGO produced and the custom builds to Keep showcase them. Keep. I've used a large collection of different uh, sources. Uh, like people yesterday, uh, they used Brick Forge and Clan Army Customs. I've used some Brick Arm stuff as well as Brick Mania parts to fill some of the missing voids that LEGO didn't do. I've also got my custom printed minifigures in here uh, for some of the Germans and the figures from Your the Lego games. Your passion for Indiana Jones is second to none, honestly. Look at these references. It's a great storyline showing all the movies from, from one end to the other. So we have Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Last Crusade, which is my favourite Indiana Jones movie, uh, personally. Temple of Doom, that's actually three of the special four-wide tracks combined from that set. And then we have Raiders of the Lost Ark, which has a bit of a weird thing. Uh, is actually the only uh, movie that is created uh, on my list of films for film school that you should watch if you want to create a perfect adventure movie, uh, even though I do love Last Crusade. Now, uh, the other thing I've tried to do is get the props from the films and have them here. Uh, and the other thing that I've done is collect as much of the media which I've referenced in my builds so that people can actually figure out what this is if they've never seen the movies. It as, does uh, enhance the display. I know it's not all about the Lego sometimes. You need to have that support. But look, look, the Lego Club, it's obviously got plenty of hidden temple Indiana Jones references in it. Your minifig passion is second to none as well. Your detail with replacing faces and getting expressions and making them all true to character is, is, is fantastic work. Well, I'm also pretty proud of the board. I make them with my father. It's built out of timber and has the original comic panels that are on the table scanned as the backdrop as well. Uh, so there we go. Attention to detail is excellent. Now, 
Oh. As we walk down the table, we actually have uh, a winner of our build competition. This is James uh, Muller's build. It is tennis inspired. He has been playing tennis for almost all his life, he was telling me yesterday. So imagine this is the Australian Open, I've been told by him. Um, and he went along to a lot of tennis tournaments as a kid, like you say, Harrison. So the side show alley aspect to the build, the rotating tennis ball for the the speed of the balls travelling over the net, it's, it's very clever, isn't it? And the blue colour is slightly inspired by Rod Laver Arena here in Brisbane as well, so uh, there we go. And then the use of purple leaves for the tree, just to make it pop, obviously representing the jacaranda, which is common around these parts as well. Indeed, it's a very, very well detailed build and a very uh, award-winning worthy one as well. Uh, yes. So a fantastic effort on his first show to come out with that as well. What a win. Go Here he is, someone speaking who's of the devil, come on in. Speaking of the devil, we're just talking about you. Would you like to say something about your build on Brisbane TV? Congratulations, James, thanks on your much. award. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. It's we, we've run briefly through your build. Do you want to, any particular favourite highlights that you like well, about it? It's funny. I think the, the simplest part of the build, which is the ball, just the studs, the trans studs, um, yeah, a lot of people have commented on, on that. It's really eye-catching and it works so well. It's like, it's, a, um, it's like a stop motion blur, isn't it? Yeah, well, as you know, it's hard to capture motion in Lego. It's Especially in a still ceiling, that's still exactly ceiling. right. And you've and done that perfectly. The action is alive and vibrant, thanks as is much. the whole build. Yeah, it's, um, well, I think really that was one of the first ideas I had as well, and it sort of evolved from there. Yeah, that I spark of inspiration, we've spoken yeah. about it on many builds. Everyone has that one idea, and you can come up with a, a table full of Lego that really stunned the crowd. Thank exactly, you very much yeah. for participating. Congratulations. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Cool. G'day, Jace. How are you going? The Technic. No, Model T. Model, Model T. T. I got it wrong. Model T. Correct so, me. What is Model T? Give us a rundown. Model T. Okay, so a 5580 1986. This one came out. Then you go from that to 1996, which is 5571 Black Cat. So you have A, B, and C off the back of the box. Right. And I've built my own cab, a day cab, and a super cab. You've got the hot rod with the 40th anniversary mini one as well, the Jeep. You've got the uh, rally Jeep, Bigfoot racing truck. Then you've got truck and helicopter here, truck and jet here, backup truck to, the, to 5590, which is off the back of the box. Then. Tankers are custom built, so 1,000, 400, 1,200. So, so what is Model T? Model T is very old. Came back out in the early days, right up to 96. So basically old school sets. Right. But so it's a Lego scale, subgroup. Yeah. So the theme. So basically Model T is the group of what it is. But right. the trailers are custom built because they've only made these two. Yep. Okay. Okay. So Fantastic. you've taken inspiration of that style of build and then you've just yeah, taken so it to the end. Basically see a truck on the road, Yep. take a picture of that and then go home and work out how to build it in Lego. Excellent. And then the, the one we built for this, this year, for the show, this is a scrap bin set so it's a road train but it's a triple B. We built a trailer to have, carry my friend's discovery shuttle. He said you've got to build me a trailer, I want to show it. So we built a trailer with a dolly and that is my day cab, which is the leftover pieces of this cab. Yeah, over. right. Well All done. Right. Thanks, Jace. Appreciate it. Well, Thanks, mate. You're welcome. Have a good day, boys. We're going to move yeah, through right. here to yeah. our train layout. Now, we have a lot of train layouts at BBX. This yes. one is very interesting because it's got lots of carriages all attached to it. So quite a lot of haulage on that one. Did you build this one, my friend? Yes, we built it with a collaboration of Jason and my partner, Angela. So, yes. Well done, Chris. Um, yep. Take us through your highlights of your build. Um, well, I've got a caravan just down here, which was a, yeah, as you can see, the smaller caravan. I made a bigger caravan. Yep. Um, I've actually got a train set from back in 1972, which is 171, which is, happens That's to be classic. 50 years old this year. Oh, uh, yes, correct. Um, I have down the, the front here, I have uh, set number 600 and 602, which is the police and the fire chief. 
Some nice and I've got an old there. helicopter down the front. Yes. Now, for those people who are watching at home and don't know this, so I'm going to show some of my minifigure knowledge. Back when they came out originally, those minifigures weren't printed. They had stickers on them. That uh, is from very the correct. Factory. And there's quite a few. There's another little minifig down here back in the Dark Ages. I was trying to find one where the old no heads and arms. Yeah, the arms were moulded into the body. They yes. had no hands. And if right. you look down near the cement truck is the old house of the... Um, Level Crossing from back in the early 70s. The little red one there? Yes. Right. Um, one of our special builds was Jason and myself made a um, standard car freight oh, yes. service. I've actually got a little push car just over here. Um, if you actually just put him on the rails there and just move him, you'll see him move. No, you don't need to do that. Just push behind. It worked a little there. Here we go. Oh, a little bit of pump action there. Yeah, a nice little action. finish there. Oh, you're still going? Yeah, you're still going? Yeah, all right. Take yeah. us through the rest of this. You're the rambling brick, so don't ramble on too no, much. No, but I'm not the rambling brick. You're not? Just, thanks to Richard giving us the uh, brick. Uh, these are my wife's, Angela. She's done the brick heads and a few of the Harry Potter books. Uh-huh. And I've got the architecture city skyline. All um, lit up? Yes, I have built a Canberra and I've also built a Brisbane. Ah. So these are non- Not um, official sets, non -official yes. Sets. You're gonna submit them to Lego Ideas? As someone who used to climb up to that top peak there every single day, uh, that's actually 80 metres up from the Brisbane River. Yes. And you've captured the uh, shape of the Story Bridge very, very well, uh, but I'm also going to point out uh, the little reference there to Lang Park, uh, more commonly known as Suncorp <laughs> Stadium. Yes, as you can see, and if you want to see the other highlight is Suncorp Plaza, the old Metway building, hence the 1180 is the height of the building, and it has ah. the tallest clock in Australia. There nice we go. Nice little tidbit. Hi, how are you going? Good. What have, what have we got here? What? Uh, this is family games night. So ah. You're or depending on your family, the... family fight night. And, and, and you're from home. Canberra? Canberra. Yes. Yep. So Sea Lug, we've had Wollongong Lug the other day. So yep. take us through to your family games night. Uh, so I've got Monopoly, which um, started off in uh, first ice, well, uh, just after COVID started actually. Right. I was coming up with a build for um, our show that ended up having to be posted or cancelled, but um, now some yeah. of these micro buildings here may be recognisable to people. Yes. Uh, yes. So um, some of them are from the Bricktober sets. Yep. That, um, They're all based on out. the larger modulars, aren't they? I yeah. think we have Sesame Street over here as well. Oh, as well. Nice. Sesame yeah. Street. Look at that big bird there as well. Good yep. job. Um, so, yeah. the cafe corner, town hall. Yep. Yep, take us around the rest of the, that you know. We've got, uh, so Downtown Diner is there. Yep. Downtown Diner. Uh, we've got the bookshop. Now, Next. while we're looking at them, and I've got one close by, these are a Lego dice piece that Lego <laughs> actually put out in the Lego games. Yes. Uh, did you get inspired from the fact that you found this part, or did this come together as just a fact that you wanted something you could interact with as well? Um, so I had to order a few different tiles for the dice, because they're actually harder to get than, um, than you would think. Um, so I did actually Great buy a couple scrabbling. of games. Um, but yeah, there was uh, quite a lines. few tiles. Um, and yeah, just wanted to put my own spin on Monopoly, so I've made it as modular as possible. And um, completely playable? Yeah. Um, Except it's, it's hard not, to take a chance card. Yeah, it's not playable <laughs> as such at the moment, um, but less likely to be thrown off the table if you, you know, <laughs> get upset. Um, the cleanup's my, still going to be about the same level as difficulty yeah. though. Um, my favourite one, other than, so with um, Scrabble, I change, so each show that I do, I put that show on the... And these letters that you have, are they uh, printed tiles of you? No, they're just stickers, unfortunately. You've um, made them up, though? I've made so them up, yep. So, um, had a few different designs. So, on my mock card, they're um, smaller, slightly smaller letters oh, yeah, I than see, yeah. what's on there. Um, so, yeah, played around with a few different designs. 
Thank you very much, Amanda. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah, it really works. Really cool. Well done. Thank you so much. My uh, Pac-Man's probably my favourite one. Though. Uh -huh. um, and the high score, so I have the Easter egg in my build is the high score changes based on the date. So it's always ah. the date. Yeah, so yesterday it was, it was different and Friday it was different as well. Nice. You see, Good I forget job. to change Thank the you. date and I don't even have the right day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again, Amanda. Highlight of our show. How are you going? Yeah. What, show us what have you done here with these beautiful easel pieces? What have I done? Yeah, what, what, what owl is this? What what owl? The owl. Yes. What, what about it? What, which which owl is it's, it? You know what? She just loved the owl. She okay. liked the eyes and the beak. It's not yeah. a special owl. It's not a yeah. it's not a particular powerful owl or. Uh... I just wanted to do for this event. I wanted to do something different. Yep. With big eyes. So I looked at doing a tiger and then maybe not. I want that fierce. Those eyes do seem to follow you around the room. Like it's me, very yeah, well done. It. And your, your other significant two? other, Nick, as well, was quite fond of the owl, I do believe. Correct. That's why I was just checking which owl it was. <laughs> but um, your other two, uh, Elvis and, uh, is it a blue My healer? Dog. My dog. Your dog? And what's your dog's name? Harley. Harley, nice. Yes. A lot of people have thought it was Red Dog. Yes. I never thought about that before. No, yesterday. The Australian classic dog, of course. Um, it, it looks more like a blue dog, though, honestly, with that, with that shadow on it. A blue healer, maybe. So that's when we took the photo when I went... That'll make a good Lego portrait. Yeah, absolutely. No, the, your mosaics are really stunning. And they often look better from a distance, I find. They're really good to step back and, 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 and yeah, admire them from far them. away. I'm quite fond of Elvis as well. Yeah, yeah. As someone who uh, was behind the scenes for the Baz Luhrmann film and knows some costuming people there, it's really nice to see uh, his story being told and uh, people who and are my age. The Elvis Presley movie was filmed totally in Queensland. It was actually, yes. Uh, people connecting who are my age with music my mum loves. So <laughs> exactly. It's I, funny I how that works out. It's interesting to see the kids go, don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah. And all the older women go, ooh, Elvis. <laughs> the real king of music. King of pop, huh? Was Michael Jackson, but Elvis was the original king, wasn't he? All right. Thank you so much for sharing your display with us. We're Cheers. Head on round to thanks, the Thanks. Thanks for being part side. of our Brisbane uh, live video. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. What are we got around the corner here? Remember names. Ask their name first. Hi guys. Would you like to be part of the Brisbane video and show us uh, what, what's been built here? Harvey. Yes, please. We have got the Aston Martin James Bond. He was over in the motorcade. Yep. We've got Hulk on the top. So, so what is going on in the whole display? It's a, a large police services. station. Emergency services. Okay, so we've got, and we've the got fire. Chief Wiggum over near police. the back. Oh yeah. We've got Homer at the front watching the drag race. Of course. Okay. We, got, we got the house burning down, no one cares about that one. They're all, <laughs> saved, they're all saving the food van. Well, uh, food is important, of course, you got to keep your strength up. Uh, Our food was so popular yesterday, they actually yeah. sold out halfway through the day, so saving the food van is a very uh, good call. <laughs> and, I've even got, and, and I've even got the pineapple from last night. Ah, uh, fantastic. Uh, they were given to us lovely uh, thanks to the Dreamworld Lego store. Down there at Coomera, they uh, provided those as a little gift for our exhibitors. And they've even got the books on all the different years to show you before they had arms. Yep, the origins of the minifig. We're we were just about talking that about that on the other side with Chris. And they've even got King Arthur. Because the minifig is actually 60 years old, isn't it? I believe so, yes. And they've even got King Arthur on the Lego brick. That is fantastic. King seems to be a popular theme as well mm. as we go around. It does seem and to be. And on the new ones, you've got Duke the Tame. Daisy Kaboom, yeah, Duke Detain, Daisy Kaboom, Wheeler, Alan. For, as uh, Lego started doing the all, new TV shows the, yeah, for the, the TV kids show. with the Lego City stuff. So these are all characters. And from, if you look from, very closely and bend down, you can see the fire inside the house, inside it. Ah, uh, yes. That is powered off a Technics light kit and battery pack and a little switch. Nice. Thank, well, thank you very you so much, much Harvey. Harvey. You're welcome. Speaking of mosaics, we seem to have the mosaic corner here. Uh, we're going Hi. to come and meet Mary. Hi Mary, you How are you Mary? A few mosaics here. Take us through which ones. Can you remember what you've built behind you? I've got um, a meat pie, which is, seems to be a Aussie favourite. Yeah. I've 
meat pie with sauce. Yes. I've got Lola the elephant. I've got Timothy the tiger. Nice. I've got a pair of thongs. Yeah, the good old flip flops. Kimberly the koala. Yeah. I've got the Aussie veggie mite. Aussie veggie mite. Or is it Aussie mite? Aussie mite. That's <laughs> the favourite too. Yes. I've got. And the flag, is that your personal heritage reference? No, no, that, that I made with the leprechaun as paying homage to St. Patrick's Day. Lovely. So, uh, the variety is stunning. It's a really good display. You've got a lot of original work there. Oh, thank you very and much. I think the kids totally love all the characters. Yeah. You've done a fantastic job. They love the animals. I'm just sad I can't eat that meat pie. Mm. Certain food is becoming a theme as well, isn't it? It is. Food is very popular. Well, yeah, we're running into some more technique. Thank you very much for your. Thank you so much, Mary. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. G'day. How are you going, G'day. Steve? Take us through what you've got on your table, mate. I have cars, so I've got the Beetle and the Mini Beetle. Yep. The Fiat 500, the Porsche 911 in the turbo build, the Mustang. Yep. The Raptor. The truck with all its actual little pieces. So, yep, these are all the classic Lego models. That classic they've... Lego models. Then I've got a couple of Technics here. Right. I've got the 911 RSR. I've got the Ferrari 4488. I've got the McLaren Senna and the Land Rover. And then I've got the new Combi, the London bus and the mini London bus. Fantastic. Look, that was excellent. R run through. We're going to keep it short and sweet. We've got a lot to get through today. Let's keep on moving on to our next build. This is Adam's uh, Marvel ships. Adam's not here, but I have a little bit of a knowledge because he has uh, been on the other side of me and we've had a chat. Uh, he likes to collect Lego Marvel superheroes. In fact, in his personal collection, he has every Marvel Lego set that they've ever made. And he wow. is very excited for the new Black Panther bust coming out uh, soon. So there we go. He's done a lot of our partner events this year and has really grown as one of our exhibitors. He uh, certainly so has. It's been fantastic to see things change. I'm quite a fan of the custom uh, stands that he's got for the ships, just to get them off the table, raised in the air. It's uh, very nice to see those. Yeah, and another bit of movement at the back of the display with the larger vehicles as well that really attracts the eye. Movement, light, sound. They're all great elements to get your Lego model lifted in its profile, aren't they, Harrison? Now, his sister has done the Star Wars display here, which, very funnily enough, for those who watch our uh, resident Lego master, Billsy's stream, uh, he doesn't love his Star Wars quite as much as some. Uh, <laughs> so, so we've sandwiched it's him It's been a cruel the... twist of fate for him. <laughs> but uh, speaking of Billsy, Billsy. we're going to try and get his attention so he can tell us You're, about his come display. Here. Come here. Let's go through these Star Wars quick, Harrison. Give us a rundown what you can see. Razor Crest, know. Mandalorian. We've got the Imperial Tidarium, the Scout Trooper. One of our uh, 501st guys was in that earlier. We've got the lightsaber GWPs, Luke's helmet, the Red 5 X-Wing, R2, obviously. Yoda makes an appearance at the back there. And my personal favourite, Boba Fett's Slave 1 in the UCS, which LEGO now has reclassed to the Fire Spray Gunship. Your pop culture references are crazy quick. You're, you're all over it, mate. Good job. Hey, Bilzy, how are you going? I'm going. I'm going good, buddy. I'm going good. Welcome to the Bruce Bricks Live mate. video. What do you got for us, mate? I so, believe this works. So uh, I'll turn it down so we can hear each other. Yeah. I don't want too much background noise. I know that's your favourite thing. Mate, it is. Um, so I'm a, I'm a DJ, radio announcer, by, by, you know, day, day, day in, day out life. So this is, your, this is your job? This is your life? This is my life. This is my love and my passion, obviously, you know? Yep. And why not a better way to Lego mix both up to... So yeah, Lego fight, shake it up, you know. And the um, figs are the slides. Yeah, have a go. It all it all works. It all moves. There's there's nothing wrong. It all slides back, forward, up, down. Yeah, no, um, good job, Jim. You know, and it, it it does what it's I want it to look like. You know, it looks like some decks made out of Lego. And now look, uh, a highlight is having your cards behind you. I'm a big basketball fan, obviously. Awesome. But uh, look at look, you've got all the cards there representing all those characters. They're very collectible minifigs. Those very, ones. Very collectible. Uh, I, I believe for some of the first skin tone. Yes. things that came out. Um, and also some of the ugliest face prints. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Lego has definitely improved, but the games, uh, one of my favourite sets, dear to my heart, basketball set, they're totally playable. 
definitely, definitely one, one of the best uh, versions of, of a Lego game, the I believe. The other thing is, uh, the only Lego minifigures ever made with springs built into the actual legs so that they can launch the basketballs. Oh, have, yes. Have a shot, Harrison. Have, have a, a shot. Come on, oh, Harrison. They've see if you can get a free throw. Here. Go for the free throw. See if you can do it, buddy. Here what we could go. go possibly wrong here? The man with no hands on coordination. From the free throw line. Oh, oh it's a miss. There we go. Oh, well. Oh, nothing, nothing. It was great while it lasted. <laughs> I nailed it yesterday, just saying. He That's did. about as accurate as my actual <laughs> basketball, so there we go. Great. Look, we're going to keep moving quickly Thank through. You Thank you very much for being Thank part so of much. Brisbane Brisbane. again. No, I love Beanie. Thanks for Next, we have the show. lovely Tanil. She has lots of movement in her display. What's the hardest thing to keep moving, Tanil? The Ferris wheel. It keeps stopping and clicking, so I have to keep adjusting it all the time. So movement and sound are always great at the Lego show, but just keeping that movement running can be tricky. You need power, oh, you exactly. need... Exactly. The... I've had to change the batteries a few times a day. Yep. Sometimes they just decide, hey, but not working, it stopped completely yesterday. But it really catches the kids' eyes, doesn't oh, it? They come does. in. They're loving it. Talk us through your build. What's your, what's your favourite passionate parts? Look, look, what's Bugs and, and oh, Daffy well, doing in Bugs the middle of the Daffy ring there? Here. Rabbit season, duck season. That well, actually looks is... like a tribute to some of the guys at Comic-Con who do the lightsaber training. <laughs> cool. I was just thought it'd be a nice little funny little bit in there because of Looney Tunes, Daffy and... Yeah, and Bugs using the lightsabers as, as a ladder to the slide in the background. Yeah. Like, there's a... There's lightsabers all over the place. There are. It's, it's really lit up. Um, I also like to point out that nobody has found noticed yet. There are knights in here visiting from the realm. Oh, so, there we are. Look ah, at them there. We go. Good job. Yeah, they're in here in a few different areas. Yes, you went through the realms yesterday, didn't Indeed, we? Indeed, we did. One of the great collab builds of, of the show. So. I have a question for you, though, Nick. What's the interior temperature of a Tauntaun? Uh, room, uh, body temperature, I believe. No, look warm. Ah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other build that we have to point out, because I am very fond of it, and it was at one of our partner events, uh, is and the and Spyro both, build. We both challenged. Oh, no, the Spyro, oh, sorry. No, the, the Spyro chess. build. Yes, but yes, I love playing Spyro. Really I'm avoiding kid. talking about the chess because I kept losing. Yeah, well, I lost too to the, the man that made the chess set, so. No, you didn't lose to the man who lost the chess set. He was only playing it, I made it. You made it, Tanil, that's I right. It. I thought it was a joint build by the both of you, but there you go, you correct me. Mostly my build. Okay. Michael Good likes point. to take a lot of credit for work that but hasn't been done. Totally, does, yes, okay. totally playable, uh, and and it's a great little... Uh, uh, takes some time to play a good game, doesn't it? It does, yes. It's like Nick here and Harrison, they played a lot of the... Well, it's the, um, very good to have on long show days. Yes, we, yeah. <laughs> All right, and of course you got a little bit of a pa pop culture reference with Pac-Man and Mario and Donkey Kong. Is that right? Yes. Uh, this here is Dig Dug. Not a lot oh, of people Dig get Dug. that one. Yep. Okay. This was actually built by Michael, if I believe. Not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> joint build go. again. This is a joint build. Mostly it's his. I did um, Bubble Bubble. Ah, oh, there we go. Then that was my bunch of I also did Red Runner and Coyote. Brick, they are the brickheads, brick which yeah, is very saw, popular. There we go. Troy, we're going to talk about your builds here. and Come come and join the uh, Briz Bricks. A little bit more enthusiasm for Briz Bricks TV next time, but run us through what you've done, mate. Come on, Troy. And, and you want to have a crack too? No. You're good? Okay. You're, you've done a lot of the K project stuff, the, the U project stuff. Represent, Troy. What, what have we got right, on board? So, Okay, so from this side, um, Dan Meehan's Creations, the original 1977 Battlestar Galactica, the Battlestar itself, and the Cylon Base Star to scale. Huge build off stud again. It's, it's a massive um, yep. structure to, to keep it upright like that, and so much detail in the dribbling. There's a, there's a lot of technique going on inside. And to Dan's credit, he's he's gone to the original schematics used on the show. Um, he's achieved a five-sided build structure, which in Lego is not an easy thing to do. Um, but yeah, to put it into context, if you wanted to have a, a little Cylon Raider like this one here, to this scale, you'd be looking at less than a stud. So. Don't, don't expect to see Cylon Raiders flying out of it anytime soon. All right. So we've also got the original Cylon Raider. Right. And a two-scale 
Viper? Battlestar Galactica references, right? Yes. Okay. And then to the right of those, from the 2005 Ronald Moore reimagined series. Right. Um, excellent show. Edward Olmos is just magnificent as Adama in, in all of that. Brilliant, brilliant series. Well worth looking at. To it now, Very these these two designs, the Mark II uh, the Mark II Viper and the Cylon Raider, are from a French designer, David Dupin. Um, brilliant guy, lovely creative genius to say the least, um, and just a, a beautiful person to talk Lego to. Lego seems to attract those beautiful creative geniuses. It, it does, yeah, yeah. You have to be slightly mad of to, to take it on. Um, but these are his first two offerings when he decided to get back into Lego and he just nailed it from the get-go. And let me just reference, you did build Atlantis as well. And we've already that's, highlighted that's that. That's correct. And we did a little bit of a, a wrap okay. around that. Luckily, Harrison's all over it. So yeah. he, he gave us some, some good <laughs> feedback. You. Look, I'm moving on quickly. I, I, I have to, get I have through to the admit, whole that's, that's, a, that's a work in progress, Atlantis. Yeah, well, we saw that. So we we, we saw the that. Looking and good. the scale is great. Yeah. Well, you go too big with something like that and you really bite off more than you can chew. Absolutely. Oh, it can be a rabbit hole. Oh, big time. Big time. Uh, moving on, we've got from Star Wars, Rogue One, K2SO and the U-Wing. So these are from um, Mirko Sapelsa, an Italian designer. Again, works of art. You know, they have their, their... You have to buy these books to be able to build That's these correct. models for yeah. his design. He yep. doesn't do an electronic instructions yep. release. He only does printed books. Uh, but they so are glorious. They're very well they done. They are magnificent. They, they are as good, if not better, than, than many of the LEGO UCS offerings. Um, the quality is exceptional. The artwork is, you know, the artwork, the photography, the layouts, everything's done by him. Um, they're limited runs, so if you miss out, you miss out. Each one comes with a printed brick that is individually numbered. And as you can see. Very collectible. Oh, absolutely. All right. And yep. last. Yep, last grade. I'm not going to miss no, out on no, this one. No, 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 go there. Look at that Technic character driving the ship. Yep. So. I make Ron, who we might visit later on, uh, very happy. Um, so here we have from a TV show called Babylon 5. Yep. Um, behind, so in front we have the Star Fury built to a uh, Technic figure scale. Um, one of the most difficult builds I've ever done because of the engineering that went inside to make the angles possible. Yep, yep. Um, and again, shape. yeah, you've got you've got compound curve. Well, not curves so much as compound angles and um, cylindrical slash conical shapes going on. Yeah, took me four years to come up with the design and, and refine it to a point where I was happy with it. Um, all based on whether or not I could do the cockpit. I think right. if I could get the cockpit right and I could build the, the engine pods, the, the rest should basically come to it. And behind it is the Omega class destroyer. Yep. So you see that the Achilles in, in season two onwards of, of B5. Um, not my design solely. Right. Um, so, few embellishments though. Well, not so much. I what would like to was, point out super quickly as Alan gets the angle, the use of the mixer joints on the cockpit for those angles. Yeah, well, the, the mixer joints were part of the reason I could do that, but I've actually refined that for version two to include um, the one by tiles with the clip bars. Ah. And it actually achieves a much better look. Yeah. So and it's, it's more stable. The curse of the Lego builder, always updating oh, when they give absolutely. us a new part. Fantastic. Well, thank so. you very much for telling us about your build. No worries. Thanks, All right, Harrison. Troy. To, bre to bleed on from the grey of the Star Wars and and I'm Babylon go Five, we pop culture colour. Look at this. What's going on here, Tiki? So this is a Spirited Away display. So it's a one of my favourite movies. It's a Gib um, Studio Ghibli movie. So I tried to build the story. Um, as you move through it so when they arrive first at the old train station and then they move through the restaurant area and you can see the parents have eaten a little too much and have turned into pigs and then <laughs> they come through and we have a different world that they enter and they enter the bathhouse and in the bathhouse 
there's a whole lot of adventures that happen in the movie and we have Haku the dragon at the top and we have Yubaba's spy sitting on the... The, the colours are great, it really is uh, eye-catching and you've done a fantastic job on... The... Is that a paddle steamer? I mean, it's, a, yeah, it's like a paddle steamer so it's yeah. the boat arrives and all the uh, spirits disembark and enter the bathhouse. And is Kermit the Frog in there as a particular reference? Is, is he passed or He's, something? That we're he not... represents a character in there. Ah, <laughs> yeah, well, okay. In there. <laughs> no. There we go. Well, that Look. brings us to the end of our loop. We're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Two and a half years in the making of it from the, uh, the COVID shutdowns and lockdowns. And um, so the theme, of course, is around the world in 80 days, famous landmarks and uh, places around the world. And at the end, a... We'll get through the rest of it. Yeah, right. so we kicked off with a bit of Stonehenge build that I did to add to a U-turn at the end of the train group, just to finish off the, the range here. And then we've got a fair few hot air balloons because originally we were having the hot air balloon 80 days around the world, 80 ways around the world. And the train display is about putting all these together, all these different places, and displaying all of the various trains. So Peter Kirby has built this uh, English... Midlands, is that right, Dennis? Yes, um, and you know, you've got sort of countryside here and canal and you know, nice, obviously, sure forest. Looking. Yeah, I love how he's done his trees and the bushes are, are a very well rounded out part of the build, really makes them pop. Uh, there's the swans uh, in the river, a uh, very Australian uh, troop there of Boy Scouts on their trip over to the English cafe. Uh, of course, there's some iconic references in the sheep yard here. We've got Babe, the pig, rounding up the sheep. Uh, a hot air balloon is never complete without a Zeppelin as well, a very old piece of Lego that Pete's brought to the table. I'm a big fan of the tractor as well, a little bit of tractor bill custom. A little and custom the little bill. swans as well, they're um, also custom. Yeah. I like them. And so that's a detail on the side of the... But we're also looking at the trains crew, so a lot of these old trains that have been on the various displays as we've done train group for... It was really the inspiration behind Brisbane's, wasn't it? The, the original train group was a Lego train group. Absolutely. And that was that was the genesis of Brisbane's 10 years ago. So it's good it's celebrating our 10-year anniversary. And this is uh, Jonathan's build. It's... Um, New York, uh, typically the zoo. Yep. Uh, as well, so. so typical of New York, and it's got uh, several references in there that Jonathan talks the crowd through, looking at all the pop culture, the Ghostbusters there on the Statue of Liberty. Uh, there's Crocodile Dundee hidden amongst a lot. Uh, and well, not to think of really Earhart's plane, but the key to this um, is Jonathan has a little. Uh, hidden animal chart that you have to find uh, different animals in. So that's uh, the theme of his sort of hell. Yeah, and up in the background behind New York, we have Christ the Redeemer, which is a shot based on Rio de Janeiro. So that's been constructed by Stephen Bean, another member of the train group. And that rounds out the first track that we've built on the first third of the train group. So moving on to here, is Stuart's uh, pineapple. So the, the big pineapple is a feature of Queensland. And staying with the Australian theme, we have four of the 12 apostles, which is down on the southern coast of Victoria. And that's represented there by Joe. And Joe's new to our train group, and this is his first contribution. We've only added it to the, to the display this show. So. Good to have that as part of it. So the best angle to view it from from here, looking back across the ocean and all the layers of the land. It's pretty much what it looks like from, from the helicopter point of view down there. Now we move into uh, Japan. So this is TJ's contribution to the train group. We have the moving happy cat uh, was just going. Oh, I'm missing the remote. Oh, there it goes. It, every second now it goes, and oh, so there's fun. several little Japanese references there of Mount Fuji and the cherry blossom. This is actually the Tokyo Tower. As Tokyo well. Tower, the that's larger what it is. Um, version yep. of the little uh, um, architecture 
down yeah. next to Japan. Then we've got China and the Great Wall of China, um, given to us by Rick for the train space. It used to be part of the GBC, actually. That wall runs the GBC that we just saw earlier. Uh, and then he's built this display out to represent a Chinese New Year festival. Some great moving elements at the back here. Uh, the panda. Yeah, the panda Coming popping up, up is always a fun one for the kids to try and find. Where's the panda? There it is. There it is. Oh, it's gone. Rotating dragon. Yes. And that's all running off the 9 volt uh, system that we use to run the trains on the train display. But you can also run the power function trains on the same track. Uh, as we move into Dennis as part of the build, I'll let you explain what we got going on here. Dennis? Okay, so we have basically a modern uh, version of Rome with the uh, Coliseum and uh, Constantine's Arch and what we've named the um, Separatist, Separatist Church, tent, church uh, because it's temple. made with a lot of brick separators it's made on brick separators and, uh, and the Spanish steps are in the middle uh, one of uh, sorry, sort of more of a uh, generic church and, and uh, fountain oh, that's a great shot going up past the fountain and the statue to the church a lot of hidden characters in there as well Yep, digging up a few bones from underneath, next to the tracks. Always finding uh, fossils and bones and remains in cities like that. And, uh, oh. yeah, and then we go into the train yard here, which is um, a collaborative effort. The three uh, next three tables are all train yard. And, um, so we've had several builders involved in this. Uh, this is Dennis's pride and joy. I, I, what do you call this? A, Turntable. Turntable. Yep. Yep. yep, but it's basically we can drive the trains on and off to different tracks. It does the whole 360 degrees. You can park them up in the various garages and sheds we have like around the train not yard. So we have Beanie, Stephen Bean, and we have Dennis, we have Alistair, and even Magnus that have been involved in bringing this all together. And, yeah. And unfortunately, he's had to be with Hogwarts all day, so we haven't seen much of him out this way. But nevertheless, Steve's been running the show, and this is your Hill Valley station as well. Yep, that's uh, actually my very first uh, building mock that I did back in 2013 or 14. So it's good to have it back out on the on the display again. And of, along with the Back to the Future trains, yes, we have yes. two of those on show now. So the original train is by Stephen. And so then the, yeah, the flying one is this one here. Is by and Dennis. The original um, uh, one that goes over the cliff at 88 miles per hour is <laughs> the, the steam locomotive along with all the carriages as well. So we've got the Santa Fe, which is a classic old train, the old Coranda train on show as well. And the train yard is really a great place for us to stack and store all these trains. So we run them at different times throughout the show, throughout the day. So you're not seeing the same train all the time. Um, and it adds a lot of variety, everyone loves to come along and see the train group. We've actually displayed here at AMRA with the Model Train Club um, about three months ago, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was later, June. It was a good chance to test run it all and set it up in this spot, in this actual location, in the building. And then recently at Redlands we had a smaller version of the train class. Yeah, so it's very modular like that, we can stop and drop uh, a lot of things in. Recently added this by uh, Benny was Her Majesty and waiting for the ghost train to come and collect uh, for the afterlife. Ah, oh, the departure of the Queen. Nice touch. More brick separators on the shelter there. And a nice highlight hidden at the back. We have Alistair's shed that he has constructed, which has been marked some of the uh, locomotives in. Someone's graffitiing it in the back. <laughs> Coming around the track now is the, uh, the very new train, the city train. Uh, what is that? Good question. Yeah, it's in line green. Well, hang on, make sure the road is facing out so the sponsors get their money. Alright, thank you, sir. Yay, we're back live. 
with Bris Bricks Live Feed and we're at the GBCs. Hey Rick, how are you going? Hey Nick, how are you? I know you? this is a collaborative build but you've been involved with it for a few years. How are we going this year? Uh, this year we're doing alright, day two. Most of it's working properly. Uh, we're going to do a bit of a walk around now, if you're ready. Yeah, we'll watch out for some loose balls on the way around as we always fix them up, a couple pop out. But what's going on here? What have we got? Alright, so we're going to start right here with uh, the Akiyuki Corner, or Chaos Corner as I like to call it, but Alan's kind of fond of it. Uh, right here we've got a hockey stick lift. Balls come in and the hockey sticks are all timed to hand the ball all the way up and down they come. So all we could the way down the slope. one ball all the way around the 360 degree loop if we needed to. We could, but we'd be here for 11 minutes. I'm not sure we want to do that. No, we don't want to do no. that. All right, right about that. Really and we're moving forward. on now and we're on the uh, Akiyuki module again. This is their heart chain. Um, oh, there's a ball. There's those loose balls we're talking about again. Good so job. this is the roller coaster carts and the roller coaster track that is implemented into a GBC. And then uh, after we go out of there, we go through the sawtooth, which is a wheel that just picks them up, drags them around, drops them in, and then into a ball pump. We see lots of ball pumps on the loop today because they're um, a fairly uh, universally uh, usable module to we implement need to get other the things. Lift, don't we? And then let gravity take them to the lower point. Right. So if you want to have a module that's got some height on it, you can just use a ball pump of varying heights. So yep. we're here again onto Akiyuki's roller coaster, I believe. Yep. And after we go around that roller coaster, we're into a, uh, basically it's a chain lift, it's using Technic beams that are all pinned together. So I'd like to highlight everything is Lego in the build? Yeah, that's correct. This one's running off a rubber tyre, and if you look really closely at the table, you'll see that it's dropping lots and lots and lots Parity. of rubber. Yep. Yeah, it's been doing burnouts all weekend, and uh, hopefully by the next show, Alan will replace it. Maybe so someone out will uh, sponsor us for the burnouts, <laughs> eh? Uh, the balls will then come down, and then they're off into our bridge module for today. This is Alan's bridge. Actually not high enough for me to pass under, but yeah, you can work on that as well. We like to keep uh, the next time, Nick. makers out. Uh, so basically this is just to give us a doorway in and out so we're not ducking underneath things and knocking everything over. Once the balls are made it out of the bridge, they come down here and we've got a reservoir. You have reservoirs in a few different places so that when stuff breaks down, the balls can just pull. And then when you get going again, the balls can start feeding them through. Through the stepper here in the reservoir, up over a wheel, through into another stepper. This one's uh, designed by Pinwheel. And then this here is Alan Birchall's uh, very own design of a stepper. Yeah, right, a little uh, lifting sections there that pump the balls up as they go along. It yeah, kind of so reminds me of a Ninja Warrior course for Lego balls. <laughs> basically uh, just a standard motor driving um, a crankshaft. It's a series of cranks going up and down. So the, the technique hidden behind the scenes in some of these builds are really good. It highlights the diversity of Lego. You get a lot of uh, feedback from the crowd as they go around and try and follow a ball around for 11 minutes or what? Uh, yeah, some of the kids are sitting there and watching the white balls go around. Yep. Um, so then we went up another, just a conveyor. We've come into one of my modules, which is a uh, dual bucket. And if the timing is off, of course, it keeps dropping the balls. So the orange balls are the common ones, but you do have soccer balls and basketballs. There's balls. soccer balls, basketballs, there's, uh, there's a variety options. of different colors and yeah, some different some prints green, and so on. Blue, yeah, right. But the, the orange ones are the cheap ones. Uh, this here is a wheel lift that's using the are roller coaster tracks. Are we section of the build now? Yeah, these are mine starting back on that yellow one. Yep. Um, we also went up another conveyor. Now I believe this is one that the Breeze Bricks Club uh, issued out where we all had a go at building one of them so that we could be the longest GBC in the Southern Hemisphere at one point. That's right. And How's that record going? Well, we haven't tried anything new this year. Right. Because of, of COVID. But that, is, that is a challenge that we look forward to in the future. We might do something about that next year or the year after, yep. yeah. Um, I ended up getting a San Francisco um, a San Francisco architecture set and decided to do something with it. So the this house is... miniatures at the back are very inspiring. Uh, I like the detail there. We've just uh, caught the camera cord on oh, yeah. the uh, GBC wheel. All right, there we We're go. Away again. Good job. So well basically, saved. that's supposed to be looking like the, uh, the, the the windy road in the middle of uh, San Francisco. Then we come into someone else's secret module. It was a secret a couple of years ago, but everyone now knows it's pinwheels. I just haven't changed the label on that. Right. Uh, here we have another ball pump that's just changed up a little bit so it can hold a lot more balls. Scooby Doo making another appearance. A pretty common a little Easter egg we found all over the show in the last couple now of this days. This is one of my favourite parts of the GBC, honestly. We get the punters involved and they're driving these uh, remote controls that you've built, Rick. Yeah, right? so the balls are coming up uh, another conveyor here and 
If you look closely, half of the balls are coming into this uh, dozer pit and the other half are going down a tunnel underneath. Okay. So that we can keep the balls flowing around the loop. dozer pit. It's a bit like Robo Wars sometimes. It's a bit like BattleBots, but it's not supposed to be quite so rough. (laughs) Uh, And the idea here is to just get the balls to go down into the the grill on the other side. So depending on how experienced the kids are. And you uh, can play soccer with that ball as a larger one as well, can't you? That's not too much of a big deal for them. Uh, And we've got a gyrosphere in the pit just because it's fun to look at. So what's the balls actually? The Joker versus Batman, obviously. Yep. Yeah, so that's that's a that's the the Batmobile module from 2000. Ooh, I don't know, 2018, oh, 2020, yes. something. Oh, that, and that it's been good, good giant, been modified giant. a little bit. And underneath, we've taken a couple of the back wheels off, and we just put a little pivot ball on. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. It is indeed. It's from their education stuff, I think. Well done. Uh, I love um, that GBC are very true to that. And then just on the conveyor coming out, we've got the little sensor there that's counting the balls as it goes past. And so far we're up to 3,635 this morning. So that's been running for how long do you think now? An hour or two? An hour and 42 minutes. Right. Well uh, and we got to about 16,000 balls all up yesterday. Yeah, okay. And that's in a typical, is that a nine hour day we had yesterday? Oh, I don't know, mate. I was half asleep. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to do Hugh Millington's uh, sliding stepper. Fantastic little design that one. There's a good example of the soccer ball and the white ball varieties that we have as well. Yep, that's right. And then we get into a Batmobile uh, Batwheel. This is my design. It has uh, four different skins, I guess you could call it. This oh, yeah. one is uh, this one is the Robin skin. Yep. Um, and then we get into what I like to call the tumble dryer. It uh, picks the balls up and drops them over the top. And then uh, we wander off into the Tower Bridge. This is a Creator Expert set from I don't know how long ago. This middle bridge here has a very slight slope on it. Right. So as the balls are pumped up the front windows, the ball at the top will give the next ball just a little push across it'll go. Yep. And then it'll come down. And uh, we've got a bit of gravity assistance coming down on the far side. Flicks it into the giraffe. I'm starting to think though, Nick, these GBC guys don't like people our height. No, it's very focused on the young audience, and that's fine. I mean, that's what Lego's all about, right? It's all for the kids. Just us big kids like playing with it as well. And, and this is a great way to incorporate so many varieties of builds, to butcher some of the sets that you have at home, and, and come up with your own creation. Butcher's a bit harsh. But the ball's coming out there with so much heat that the uh, exit road is actually sloping up just to slow them down a little bit. Then we're hitting the uh, Jeffrey Giraffe module. And then we're moving on into the green industrial bucket, which is the first module that I designed. And then we move on to Jean-Marc Vimol's Greek screw. This is a classic design from times of old, used by the Greeks to make water go uphill. That's hurting my eyes to look at it. That's quite the interesting movement pattern. How do you offset all of those bricks? Um, magic. Magic. It's the magic of Lego. That will do it. We'll then move into the Whirly Gig by Great Ball Pit by Matt Norman. Uh, and then we're into his workshop module one, which I've just re- reskinned with a bit of Duke Kaboom. And if you look closely at the wheel, the front wheel on the bike, the balls are giving him a little love tap, give the wheel a bit of a spin. That's a very cool little placement there. And then we're into a, a really old design ball pump by Lasse Deliran. Um, it is fantastic. It's just running and running and running and running. And has been for years, haven't had to touch it. Sometimes the old designs work the best. Back into another one of my industrial buckets, and then onto another skin of the uh, bat wheel. This is the Bat Girl skin version. And then into the corner here, we get to Emmett's crane. We got Emmett from the Lego Movie in there operating his crane. More importantly, though, Stark Tower. Well, Avengers Tower. It was Stark's first. So this is uh, a modified version again of a, an old Lego set. Again, there's a ball pump in there that pumps the balls all the way up through the tower. And they roll out the front, and then they move on into the Akiyuki train. Right, so Andrew, take over from where Rick left off with the GBCs. We go around the rest of the half of the track. Okay, so I think um, Rick, he's brought up the um, the Akiyuki uh, Type 2 train, uh, which runs on a passive system. So everything's powered by the car itself. Uh, So you can see it's um, gone into what's coming out now. Yep. As it comes down, it will flip up using the motor inside the car, so there's nothing, no motors inside the, um, the unit itself, it's all on the car. Yeah, right. Then we come down to a, uh, that is a version of a 2018 uh, Chicago brick world brick pump, which um, has been modified for a um, bit of a reservoir, so if we have a backup, we can shut that off and it can just fill up until we've fixed whatever problem we have downstream. 
And then this here's a mishmash of, uh, looks like a uh, Brickworld uh, workshop modules from over the years. Okay. And then that's a 2015 one at the very end with a counter on. Yep. I'm um, just using a um, little infrared sensor at the end. Right. See we're up. So we got to what 16,000 balls for the count Did yesterday? the count line up? It um, did not, no. Because yeah. there'd be a couple of balls out. About yeah, 400 difference between this one and the uh, ball count you would have okay, seen on the, um, yep. on the bulldozer. And we're just going to uh, another WMI1 from Great Ball Pit feeding in into the, in this the, small yeah. cinema here. Okay. Most importantly, it's me! And yeah. Least importantly, but the amazing <laughs> cinema that you put together here. So take us through your, your idea of your theatre here and incorporating the GBC in that. So it went from being as much smaller than this, and then it ordered the wrong size base plate, so it went to be, meant to get 32s and it got 648s, <laughs> and just went with it, and it um, grew from there. Um, so the balls, they'll feed in the side using a 2018 uh, brick wheel ball pump, um, fill up the popcorn warmer, which you can actually oh, see nice. is filling up now. Yep. Then they will drop down as they've just done, yeah, okay. um, and then they they'll stay in the back for a little while, going up the conveyor, and then they'll eventually come down the uh, two cinema aisles. So they're like punters coming in the front door, going up the escalator, and then they run down the centre aisle between all the uh, crowd. They do, yeah, because it's um, so the train station is here too, uh, because the you can see the builds like it's the same width as the tables. Yep. I um, mean, our smaller shows will have a train running up and down, okay. um, so I had to put a train track in. and thought, well. Why not capitalise on that and make a train station? A subway, um, if you will. Uh, yeah, but it's even got the, the uh, QR um, signage on it. Yeah, yeah, lots of custom prints there. Uh, are they done by somebody? Uh, by me. They're all, they're all handmade, hand cut. Uh, there's they're 160 fantastic. plus of them in there. Um, yeah, using, yeah, sort of use some real world brands and some made up ones as well. <laughs> At least that's not snake. Yeah. Why does it have to be snakes? The, the, all the kids they find, they go straight to it. I found him! Indiana Jones, he's there! Um, we come round to, so this is one of my original ones, a screening plant. It's just something I put together with from a, um, a couple of Lego Technic sets that I had. Uh, so it's just a conveyor and then a flipper to bring it up. Right, uh, is that the next element? Uh, this is Tsunamis. So this is based on, um, so people who follow GBC online will know Mr. Red from, um, from the USA. Uh, it's based on one of his builds, and I've just taken it and sort of uh, solidified it, made it a bit, look, a bit more, um, a bit more industrial looking. Um, so, a bit, so, so it's the a way you idea. carry the balls through. Yeah. So again, it uses a um, 2018 ball pump from the um, Chicago Brick World, and then um, just my sort of own design to get the. Yeah. Um, the and this is real, another lifter of yours of your design. Or? No, this is a cradle tipper by um, Stefan Ill or Mindstalk of um, of Sweden. Right. Uh, so this is built purely from instructions. Um, and I've got the, uh, the QR link to his instructions on the front there, so if the public want to scan it and download it and build it, they can. Yeah, great. And, and so GBC is obviously very popular at a lot of the LEGO shows, and, and you guys have competitions worldwide, really, don't you? Uh, we do. There's a few um, GBCers who even have their own uh, websites with competitions on them. As a Canadian guy, uh, Matt Norman, who does exactly that. So we we'll run competitions every single year where um, with different there'll be different um, things that you have to do for it each year and um, it's, it's pretty popular. And, and one of the advantages of GBC is you can add elements all the way through and just increase the size and continue to grow. So you build up your collection of GBC modules and just let, let it flow, don't you? Oh, you definitely can. Like this show here is um, probably two thirds the size of our last one. Yep. Um, and then next year we'll, we'll go for it. Yeah, yep. let, let's, let's double it. All right. I love, I love the spectrum, full spectrum there of all the colours of Lego. Um, we had yes, rainbows yesterday and we got rainbows again today. So yeah, this is the rainbow lifter by, I can't remember who it's by. Um, it's a European guy, I forget his name. Um, and then before that was the Akiyuki ball lift. Uh, so that's Akiyuki, the famous Japanese designer. Um, oh, sorry, I skipped over one, yep. Uh, yeah, good. so he's actually an engineer, so his stuff is just absolutely mind-blowing what he does. Uh, this one here with the... Um, the conveyor and the sort of the back and forth motion. Um, I think that come from an Akiyuki as well. No, I'm getting, I'm getting someone shaking their head. Um, but it's uh, be a pretty common design. You'll see these on all, on all GBCs. I'm quite fond so of this one. We're getting back into Alan's area of um, yeah, modules now, aren't we? We are. Yeah. Uh, then we've got the 2019 uh, Chicago Brickwell uh, workshop module. Uh, so the sawtooth. Yeah. And then the next one, I think that's a um, workshop module as well from this year, I think. Um, the 20, uh, might be 2021, 2022. Yep. Um, and then straight into another um, Akiyuki uh, hockey stick. Which lift, is where we started. Which is nice. We've completed the cycle. 
Thanks very much, Andrew, no and, and to Rick, of course, for um, giving us the GBC rundown. We're going to take a quick pause and we'll be back with another section very shortly. Stewie, how are you going? Not too bad, yourself? Talk us through your build, mate. What have you, got, what have you brought to the show today? I bought Camino from uh, the Clone Wars. Yeah, right. And um, it took me about a year to build. Yeah. And it has over 100,000 parts, not including the figures and um, ships. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of part usage. And what's your highlights? Point, well, highlights? Point uh, out some of the... All the different little scenes I have there, little, little clone cadets there. I have the little bad batch room there I made for later on. Yep. yep. And one of my favourite scenes I like is up here in the things. I put lights in there as well, like first time I've had lights, so that's good. Yeah, no, lights definitely bring the builds to life, don't yeah. they? Yeah. We just so. got our first official Kaminoan minifigure as well yeah, from no, Lego I've... in this recent wave. Uh, did you manage to get those in there? I noticed you've got yeah, your custom Yeah, I got my Kaminoan original well. um, custom kit Kamino figure in there. I made it seven years ago for my first Kamino one I made. And uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic build and I love it. And, and transporting it, it's a bit of a challenge. It is, yes. I saw you setting it up on Friday, yes. and there's several layers, obviously, on all, Do all, all different three layers. main elements. And the only way, you know, transport it is by containers, so it's not easy because it's a round shape. And, um, yes, I just try to create every little scene there is. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I'm just having a good time loving it. Everyone loves it. Everyone just can't get enough of it. Yeah, so, getting some good feedback. It's been a great show, hasn't it? Yeah, it's an awesome show just packed out. <coughs> Chris Bricks is just an awesome event. And he really is. Thanks for being a part of it, Thanks, Stuart. Stuart. We really Thanks appreciate your time and your effort. No worries. Moving on back to something we had a little bit of a preview of yesterday. Uh, we've now got the classic Lego again. This time out of the box. We've also got some of the old wooden toys that is the tractor there, which was some of their first plastic moulding in terms of Lego's toy development as well. And it's been recreated in the brick form right next to it, which is also fantastic. So yeah, from 1951 to the model that came out in 2018, the Ferguson's tractor, we're really seeing some classic Lego here, aren't we? Of, of really old, original. Including some moulds like these corner pieces that they just no longer produce. And if I'm not mistaken, and I hope this person doesn't mind, they had the old square actual connections underneath uh, before the bricks had the new shaping for the clutch power. And they still connect with today's brick, don't they? Which they is, do indeed. Which is amazing quality of Lego. Uh, come on, come and show us this next build. What have we got going on here? We've got Voltron, we've got Minecraft Tower we'll get to shortly. Take us through it. What have we got? Yeah, thanks. First of all, we've got our uh, Star Wars builds here by Lachlan, who's uh, one of the junior members here. So it's thanks, Lachlan, for contributing. Wars. I love the fact the stormtroopers are missing. Yes, they yes, always miss. They always miss their target, always. That's a little pew, pew, there. pew. And then we have our little hobbit sort of uh, orc build over here, which is uh, shows some cave trolls. 20 year anniversary, plus a new uh, Lord of the Rings TV series coming out. Yeah, right. And we have our Voltron from your ideas section. And then we also have the forest. Uh, the most recent the gift we've purchased that That's came a out. Fantastic little GWP. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then we have our Minecraft. Take us so through the Minecraft from top to bottom. We'll see what we got here. So you have uh, your overworld there, which is the forest area. Then we go into the caves, and then we go into the Nether. So it's all built up rather than building out. So it has a little roller coaster that sort of goes through as well. Oh, that's so cool. Well done. Yeah, yeah. And it's also nice to see a roller coaster that's just done with the old system without any need for power-ups as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just works constantly. And it's also the 10th year. Total playability. Year, the 10th year for LEGO Minecraft as well. So yeah, 10 right. years of BBX and yeah. 10 years of um, Minecraft. Yeah, and uh, this is my 10th year at... You're a 10 year -er. Yeah, so well done. Well, one of our start. original founding members. I need my long service award. Uh, you're going to wait another we're, we're 10 years. We're getting there. Another 10 years before you get that. No, it's 15 guys. years for long service. Hey TJ. Hello. Take us through your build. How are you going? It's going quite well. The batteries have been a problem. Okay, well let's go through the things that are moving and working. What do you got? I have Splash Mountain from Tokyo Disneyland and Big Thunder Mountain from Tokyo Disneyland. There's a bit of a theme to all these. I'm starting and the to see a theme Tokyo, here with Tokyo, Tokyo Disneyland. Disneyland. Right, and you've mocked up all of these characters yourself, I haven't have. you? Of all the Disney characters. 
come around the front of the table so you can talk to us better and take us through Mr. Potato Head, obviously. All these parts can come off and you can rearrange them to look like Picasso and Buzz with all his working clay pictures, such as laser. Oh, like, look at that detail going wings. on here. Oh, the wings broke. Okay, that's it's all right. It's an authentic toy made in China. Yes, of course. <laughs> we'll come through. Some of these modules you've made here with the moving parts are, are, are commendant, mate. You've, you've done a great job here. So Thank quickly, you. take us through again where you're up to. Well, I was up to here. Yep. And before I knew that you could get off-brand Lego lights, I had to stick power functions lights into lanterns to make them work. Right. And there's a separate motor for the shed and a motor for the wheel and a motor powering the chain link. Excellent. And then I have Pirates of the Caribbean. A personal favourite. With moving Lego animatronics. Lego matronics, if you Lego will. matronics, I like it, yes. It starts in the swamp and is this old grandpa guy is telling the story of when pirates were around. Then you go through this tunnel with a talking skull and it's where all the pirates are buried. Then you go through a magic portal thing and then it's when pirates are alive over there. And then they're attacking this town and they were stealing all the eggs and the chickens and all the food and they're trying to hunt down Jack Sparrow who's hiding all throughout the ride. So there's several Jack Sparrows hidden in each of the different um, scenes that you've created yeah. around this. And there's, they're trying to drown the mayor to find information. <laughs> Which is actually part of the ride I believe. It is. Yes, it's, it's all very good attention to detail. Thank you very much for showing TJ and displaying with us. My pleasure. We're going to keep kicking along. I'll pass the mic to Kevin. Yes, Kev, show us what's happening here, mate. Come on out and tell us uh, what this Disney Wonderland has been created. I'm starting to think, Nick, this family might be Disney fans. They, they are definitely into their Disney. Aloha. So this is Tokyo Disneyland. Right. So. It's based off our memory, so we have the chip and So you guys all went to Tokyo Disneyland, yes, right? Yes, we did. And we loved it so much we decided to take it here. Nice. Share the love. Yes. So we have the Chippendale roller coaster, and there's an Alice in Wonderland place, yep. as you can see. Then the Disney castle with new added lights. They weren't here before. Ah, this is new and improved. See, builds always continue to grow, don't they? Yeah. So we have the castle with the parade. And now, have you done the little Mickey Mouse? Uh, they they're just stickers. I have you, no, no idea where they came from. Neither do I. That's all. fair enough. Uh, and there's a parade going on, obviously, around the castle. Yep. I like the use of the base plates that we <laughs> saw over at the basketball courts uh, of Bilzey. NPU in the again, happened green right there. used uh, and, to make the big steps. Yeah, and it gives a little pop over those little plants there, and, and it looks quite neat, doesn't it? It really does. Well done. All right. Uh, a little bit more, a little bit. What else we got? Keep going. Talk, um, talk us through the. We have the. Um, so, this. The castle was built by me and my mum and yep. TJ, obviously. And this stuff was more me, but the ice cream shop was mum. Okay. So we have a little ice cream shop with a hot dog stand. Yep. And then we have this is supposed to be the Mark Twain, but we just use the Steamboat Relief set. Yeah, right, cool. Yeah. And more lights, because they're very good Continuous lights. improvement. Yep. And then Jungle River Cruise. Right, so again, this exists in Tokyo, yes. in Disney, and you... But do we have The Rock in there? That's my question. No, we do not. We have A Rock. A Rock, but uh, not The Rock. There da -da. we go. We do not have Dwayne. I tried to put him in, but Mum didn't know who he was for some reason. <laughs> so Lovely. Time for some homework. Thanks, Kev. We have the backside of water. And the backside the, of water. The Winnie the Pooh yep. section? And the Winnie the Pooh ride. So, the entrance. is that again yourself or your mum uh, or a bit of both? A bit of both, really. Excellent. Yeah. And then this is Dad. Who's so, over there. this is Trevor. We'll, yes. we'll go on to Trevor's Technic. Hey, Here Trevor. is Trevor, another member of the Sea House and Clan. You're a Technic man yourself. What have you got to tell us? Uh, not very technical as some, but uh, I try to make things a little bit easier for the kids to throw characters in among some of the trucks. 
it gets their eye and they need to look at it a little bit more, a bit longer. It's fantastic. It's nice to see the uh, Technic getting some love. Well, yeah. we've got a few Technic displays starting to pop up in the club. You're one of the uh, more original members of the Technic family. Um, have you got a favourite one that you got here at the moment? Uh, possibly the old 2014 cargo plane there. And what draws you to that model? Old, the, sh <laughs> the bad colour of it, the shape of it, and it's probably the first one I did with no instructions, Google, and uh, yeah, I just quite like it. It's a chipmunk flying it. Yes, <laughs> there's a chipmunk flying it. Once again, I borrow them from the kids just to get kids' eyes so they know who's flying what. I thought it was just so that you could be part of the Disney collection. Well, that's probably another reason, isn't it? <laughs> you had a general theme I just want to say it. congratulations to yeah. you and your family, oh, look, inaugural it. winners of the Presidential Award. You guys have contributed heaps to the club, so there's yourself, oh. Linda, TJ, Kevin, and, my daughter and, Jess. and your daughter, Jess. And yeah, thank you very no, much for, for being a good part of Brisbane's family. It's great for myself and the kids to get out, meet people. It's fantastic. We love it. Well deserved. Well deserved. Have a good one, guys. Thank you so much. Well Cheers. Deb, what have we got with Deb? Deb, have you bought the Winter Wonderland to us? Uh, what have we got here today? Tell so us about it for the Brisbane show. We have show. a giant snowman. That is? That's, yes. That's, that's a magic scale. Good yes. thing I've got my jacket for this display. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, and this is Look just at the a, detail on the broomstick. Yep. Um, just a, a winter village. We've got Sanders Parade happening at the front. and then With all eight reindeer, where's Rudolph? Rudolph's up the back. He's oh. actually at the North Pole, still making sure the others are still okay, okay. doing the right good, thing. Good. Um, and trying to get fed, take everyone else's carrots. So yes, we've got the reindeer barn and then the um, greenhouse. Christmas train. Christmas train going through. And a few of the uh, winter builds all scattered throughout. A lot of the Christmas yes. builds, I believe, make appearances in your display, Debbie. Yes, yes. I'm trying to show the public how you can use the actual sets within a mop and then still have my Patronuses from Harry Potter as the ice sculptors. I really do like yeah. those. They are yes. fantastic. It, it really so. it looks like the chainsaw there yeah. going Although off. Although I'm a little bit concerned for health and safety with chainsaws on ice. But <laughs> luckily minifigures We're go back together. <laughs> we have a snowman building competition at the back of which Olaf is uh, judging. Oh, is he's not the creation. No, he, no he's, he's actually judging. Okay, yes, 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 let's see. see. He might not be biased maybe yeah exactly especially see. if they make other snowmen in his image <laughs> <laughs> so yes thanks deb you always bring a great display to the to the club and we appreciate your time and effort no worries thank, thank you very much. much hello guys oh finally some holden love this is what we're here for oh, i'm sick of all those porsches run us through what you guys have here and ben. mocks too right yeah. you guys are yeah, making so these. all of them are our own um we spend a lot of time on them We've got the Plymouth Barracuda, which Ben here has done. Uh, Nissan yeah, S13, uh, Holden Tirana, uh, A9X, Holden uh, HQ Monaro, uh, VL Walkinshaw, regular VL Turbo, and then Jacob's got his... I've uh, got the 317 HSV, I've got the Porsche 962C, uh, the Mercedes Silver C9, and we've got the McLaren F1 GDR as well. So you guys are here, I can come to you to build my uh, Lumina. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the, the attention to detail, guys, is yeah, to be commended. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, yeah. a lot of time. Um, the Look. motors take the most amount of time yep. because the you've got to cram as, well. as much. Yeah, absolutely. But the shaping, everything, it all takes time. And again, like you said, is this using these mixer joints here, or is this? Mm. Yeah, lots and lots yeah, and lots of different weird and techniques. And yeah, the, just to get the, the angles, shaping yeah. quite yeah. right. Sometimes yep. you have to angle the whole side of the car just to get the angle there. Yeah. So. Everything. I like all the different shapes for the mirrors, how yeah. it, not everyone's yeah, the same. The same yeah. Yeah. Right. Everything is different. You guys have done a fantastic job, yeah, well thank done. You. Congratulations and thank you for coming to the thank show. You. Thank Thanks you for chatting. And we're moving into one of our junior members. This yes, is the and build. winners of the winners Panama of the bricks for oh, uh, movement for the, this one. And, so. lights. and lighting for the uh, brother of Yvette, Craig, who has done the Nexonice display. So we're going to have a quick pan over that and then we are going to move Friends on the right and Nexo on the left. To something that there will be a very excited uh, for the members of the LEGO group 
who have been around for a lot longer than I, and that is Classic Space. Now this is by our event organizer, Troy. He has helped make BBX what BBX is. Uh, and I believe, to my knowledge, because I haven't heard his sales pitch yet, but this is every original Classic Space set that was made. Now, I will uh, have to be very honest, this doesn't have quite the same nostalgia for me as it does for a uh, lot It's probably my turn to have a chat then, I guess. I don't know as much about Troy, and he's very busy at this show, so he can't be here to talk us through it, but the classic space was 1980s, uh, and for a lot of guys of my vintage, the 50-plus-year-olds, uh, this, this was the turning point for LEGO, where it really opened up the, the whole new world, so to speak. Uh, well, it is one of their flagship themes that started it all off. So they had LEGO City, they had LEGO Space, and I believe it was LEGO Castle. Correct. They, they are definitely the, the three drivers to the... Troy, come on, jump in. You found you. Make some time, because we don't know what we're talking about here. What have we got on display? Welcome to BBX TV. What have we got here? Um, this is every classic space set that was released by LEGO and actually there was one set that never officially got released which is uh, this set over here, the 1526. One um, LEGO designed it, they did the box artwork and everything like that but it never actually made it to the shelves for sale. So you've mocked that one up to show what it would look like if yes. it ever got, yep? Yes. But all the rest you've collected obviously Space LEGO since day dot and, yep. and found many since. Yeah, and probably 80% of the collection was from when I was a kid. Excellent. So you have been the classic space guy since <laughs> before since, you since can remember. Yeah. <laughs> so Troy's really the original Benny. Special, 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 yes, special. I am the original Benny. And I consider myself an Emmett as well. I just follow the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, you, you and your family bring a lot to the show. Congratulations on putting on the Brisbane show in this fantastic yeah. new venue. That's all right, thank and you. And we look forward to doing this in many more years to come. Excellent, thank and you. And continue to grow. Let's, let's keep going. We've got another leg of this table to do. Uh, and, and the way it's been laid out is great, boys and girls that are watching at home. If you ever come along to our show, we've got plenty of room to move around. We've got several large table displays. The we've custom got, plaques as well do. We, we've help. got we've got Ron. Ron, come here. How you going, Ron? Don't escape coming in. Show us what your Technic branding is all about. Now this is a true diehard Technic because I believe he uh, doesn't touch the other bricks. He's told me before. Ah, oh, the other Lego bricks aren't as good as Technic. <laughs> Well, they did agree to disagree on that on Brisbane's TV. Right, talk but us, us around what you've got. One, talk us around. Why is Technic so good? Well, you could drop these and they don't fall apart, whereas you drop some of the other Lego bricks and they'll fall apart everywhere. Right, so transport's a bonus for you? You can oh, just yeah. throw them in the back of the car and bring them oh, here for the show? Put them in a crate <laughs> and bring them in. Now, yep. eagle-eyed viewers will note the Osprey. We just talked to Troy about Lego sets that were not released. How did you manage to get one of those? I got that for Father's Day. Yeah, oh, but you must have some excellent connections. Yes, oh, it yes, does. it does. It, and I think a lot of it was just luck. That Scott there were a few that came out and you could and get them. And they were able to get one. Scott yep. got one and then he heard that somebody else had another one. Now, you're lighting up all your technique these days. It, yes. It's really starting to pop. Um, and there's a lot that are remote controlled as well and they all work. And, and you, you put on a great display every time. You seem to bring more and more technique. And that's not, this isn't all of it. They've this isn't even the half more. of it, is it? No, I've still got more at home. <laughs> I can actually go eight tables. That you do that I find quite interesting is you use the Jack Stone figures. Do you want to tell us how hard those are to find? Very hard. You've got to be lucky because the Jack Stone sets were only in the late 70s, I think. And Early 2000s, the Jack Stone made its first appearance. No, there are a few, some of the older ones. And then they came out in the later than that but very hard to get very hard to get the figures because the figures weren't sold separate they were part of a set yeah right and then um, yeah so it's just a matter of finding them on eBay or wherever and what about your Technic men have you got any of them hanging around uh, yes I do have actually you've got a few of them driving the vehicles and yeah. whatnot. Oh, in yes, the crane the red crane the they're Unimog. also quite hard to get and quite expensive now as well uh, yes the last one time I looked on eBay, they wanted seventy dollars each. Yeah, they're nearly approaching a hundred dollars a piece, I believe. Yeah, yeah getting, I've got a, a few. The next Lego Ghost. They are. Yeah. And but I don't they're think... hard to get. The no. same. You, you can't. Buy they're them. not going to be making them again, are they? They don't no. seem to be going back down that track. So. 
Very good. Thank you very much, Technic Champ. We're going to move forward. Thanks Thank for you. showing it out. One show Esposito to the other. And You're we'll one, of the, track down. one of the great members. Cheers, Ron. Now, Ron has a son who just bought him that set for Father's Day you mentioned, who's called He's Scott. on his way right now as we speak, so we're going to pan over what and he's this built. And is, this is his build. Hey, Scott. Just gave you a little bit of a wrap for um, all, hey, the, all the love you put out to your dad. Grab this mic. Take us through your build. Hey guys, uh, so we've basically got almost all the modulars um, from the Create Expert, Creator, whatever line they call it now. Um, also the brand new Sancto Sanctorum up the front. Um, Emmett's House from Lego Movie 2. Um, There's got... another Indiana Jones that I've noticed. Is there? Right in the front of... Oh yeah. Yeah, in Indy's coming out of the pool hall after he's had finished whipping them all into shape. Is there anywhere that Indy isn't? Anywhere there's Indy. At his display when he's hosting <laughs> Bruce Bricks TV. I don't have Captain America. I forgot to put Captain America in. But Spider-Man's out the front. He's got his energy drink for the weekend. Yep, Dr. Strange he's my spirit animal of the energy drinks. Um, what else we got? We've got various different scenes. Bane's robbing an armoured car. I've got um, Batgirl's eating a banana down the front somewhere. We've she's got, just here for the. She's down looking. the front, yep. She's down the front. What else have we got? Well, Batman, and, Batman and Robin you've are up on the roof. You've got most of the you've got Town Hall, you've got the cafe corner, yep, the um, fire station. Fire station, apartments, green growth, uh, corner service station, corner yep. garage. Town Hall. Assembly Square. Oh, yes. Um, another pet shop, bookstore, bank, emporium, Town Hall, police station. So last year's modular. Sancto Sanctorum, and then we've got my custom Lego shop next to Emmett's house. Yep. We've got the burger bar. Detectives um, office. Detectives, Parisian, Grand Hotel. So yes. Grand Hotel is this That's year's most recent one, modules. I think. Yes. Yep. So Grand Hotel's 2022's modular this year. Yep. And then They've been cinema. going since about 2010, I think. Uh, well, this is number 15 in the season. Right. Series. So the Assembly Square is number 10. Okay. So Assembly Square has nods to the previous 10 in it. So there's different references, yep. and this one has a few references to like police station, um, city hall. There's a in the instruction book mainly. You right. have to unless you read the instructions, you wouldn't know what references are there. Um, we've got our Chinese New Year garden as well. Nice little quiet place in the the hustle yeah, of the city. Yeah, no, breaks up the city scope. That looks yes. good. Yes, and Jenny built the nice little creepers hanging off the building for me. The nice little flowering vine. Now, you're linking into Jenny there. I'm going to use that as a chance to move through the display yes. because. You've worked collaboratively with Jenny and Mark, who have done yeah, this park. half of the display. Yeah. So your train track runs all around, as well as it's individual loops, loops yeah. for the inside. So yeah, Mark and Jenny, myself, this is the one time of year we get to put everything out on show and yep. just go big or go home. We've got eight tables. <laughs> eight we're, table display we're, we're between already planning, three of you, right? Yeah. We're already planning next year's between 10 and 12 tables. It is going to go big. So we've got the big the join up between both of us. Um, so I've got the working part and people come and over here for the fun part. the fairground is just astounding, isn't it? The like, fairground. Come here, Mark. Come, come on, here, Mark. Get your, get your face into the camera. Come no, on, Mark. Mark, Mark come out behind, from, the come out from behind the pole. He's a trained guy at He's heart. acting shy, but he, he, loves, loves, the, uh, he loves the camera. Yeah, come on, Mark. He loves his trains. How you doing? Grab the microphone. Grab the yeah. microphone, champ. I'll hand you over to Mark. And he just, can talk to his display. Tell us how much fairground have you got going on here? Run us through some of these sets. Well, these are the um, fairground sets, which started with the mixer, then came the Ferris wheel, right? Then came the carousel, carousel. then came the roller coaster. Oh, and this is derailed right in front of us on live TV. We're just getting back on the track. Right, that could be an insurance problem on that one. But yes. We'll and you have you got on. the double loop roller coaster coming soon? Not at this stage. No. We're still All in right. Discussions about building a new ride. Uh -huh. It's going to be more about the transport and logistics of it. Absolutely. Uh, no, it's I believe I saw a photo of yeah. the Back and Hill guys moving van and it was pretty much to it the was, roof. It was packed. Yes, yes. Well, yeah. you, you guys bring a lot of Lego to the table. Yes. Um, I, I love the mini figs and the crowd is just... All 617 of them. It is just chockers, like like the show. Look, look at pan around the show, Alan, and just see from up high at the moment and that this room is pumping. We have packed to the brim. We had sold out sessions for the first three sessions this morning and there is still room to move. 
Jenny has really gotten into her gardens, hasn't she? And well, her flowers, her floral arrangements, oh. you know, like all this was all her idea around the tree. The, the colours just brilliant. pop, Absolutely. right? I'll take the chance to give credit to the Stringer Absolutely. clan because they inspired the palm trees in the pirate build we had a look at earlier. Uh, they first did it and in their zoo. And, and along with that too is also the, um, you know, like the lighting now is now the new way to go. I, I understand that Lego doesn't actually make the lighting. It would be nice if they did. But it's a new added. Um, oh, for sure. Display, it's lights you know? and sound and movement, yes. right? Yes. So you just need a bit of sound and you're there, really. You've got to the boxes. sound down, because if we all had sound going on our displays, we'd all be. Um, I don't know going what you're crazy. talking about, Mark. <laughs> going off like a whip crack. Yeah, okay. No, but you've got plenty of lights no and problem. movement, yes. Yes, um, and, and it's yes. a big draw card, as yes, you can it is, see. It is, um, the, the kids hang around here for ages, just trying to identify all the elements. Yes, we're having the little game at the front. You know, yep. um, I know you're I very interactive with the crowd yes. too. I really appreciate all the effort that you bring uh, look, to the Brisbane shows. We love it too. You know, we get a big kick out of doing this, just as much as they get a kick out of coming to see. That's it. what it's all about: it sharing is. the love. It is. All right. It is. Well, thank you very much. Thank guys. you. Thank Thanks for chatting with the rest of your day. We will. All right, guys, we've nearly completed the loop. We're we going are to, uh, now on to the campground. It's almost as though they needed the campground for the sh big show that they're doing. That's right. Yeah, this was the other collaboration, I believe. Debbie, who built the snow build, uh, her significant other has done the campground. Would you like to run us through it? Certainly would. So this is our inspiration of a Big Four caravan park that we used to take our kids on holidays. Um, the water park, the putt-putt, the two favourite things. But the big burning question we've always had is, are we a wheat picks person or a cornflakes person? Mmm, that Why is a good question. Why not both? That's it. <laughs> oh, no, the putt putt's great. And, uh, and my, wife's, my wife has always been, Debbie, um, is more of an eggs person, so she goes for the eggs as well. <laughs> I, I, I love the powered up sites, you've got the tent sites, uh, the bus, it's, it's very big four all over, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it, it's, uh, I love and, and I'm also more of a motorhome person myself. I'm not really into tents anymore. Yeah. Getting a bit older, so yeah. Oh, you, you, move, you progress I'm through life, through life you? so you yes. First you're in, you're in a little camp out, you move into a flasher tent, then you upgrade to a camper trailer, then a caravan, and eventually motorhome until you retire, basically. Yeah. After That's my it. last attempt at basketball, I'm going to avoid the golf. But I am going to ask you, uh, we've seen it a couple of times using with the studs. What drew you to using the tiles for your water as opposed to that? As that's very different to a lot of standard builders. So we're, we're using the clear blue tiles, just putting them loose, and that then allows the ability to play with it and also gives the sloshing effect of water. Yeah, and, and it's about what bricks you can get from the pick a brick wall and whatnot that you have available to you, isn't it? And it's pretty much it's a good work, use. With, work with what's available. Yep. Sure, yeah, thank you very much. Thank no you to the, to the build. Now, he's not here because he's probably doing club stuff. He does a lot of our social nights. This is Stephen's display. Right. Unlike uh, Troy, who has gone with every original classic space, uh, Stephen just loves anything space. So this so is Lego in Lego space. Lego in space, and every space is filled with some Lego More space. spaceships. And, and I space believe the idea behind and... this was that there's a space thing from each year that there's been a space set. Right. I was told earlier. Nice, uh, yeah. Which is very cool. So we've got the rockets up the back corner there. We've got the original lander crafts up the front. We've got pod races. We've got, we've got the whole works here, haven't we? Really, it's a, it's a great mashup of, of space, utilising the space that he has available. The other thing is, I have to say, not very often does my father pick up a Lego set, but he actually built the Apollo 11 Lunar Lander. That is how cool that set is. Yep, 2019, those, very those good attention to detail. For the people who haven't actually had a lot of experience with the parts, because they are quite hard to come by, are a drum lacquered gold. Right. So that is how they are manufactured, so there we go. Moving on to something that is still space themed, but these are all original creations. He's going to give us a quick run through of what's on the table. One of my good friends at the show, Jim, run hey, us Jim. through what you've got on your table. Show us what you've brought to us. Oh, good morning, if it's still morning. I've got a few of my own spaceships here. Um, my sort of space military theme in the white and blue. My space pirates in the black, grey and red. Bit of the ground action going on there. I've tucked Optimus Prime in here still because I almost didn't bring him but thought, oh, I better. So I've got my ships, my ground crew, some ground vessels. And then of course we move on to the guns that sort of intrude everywhere. Except for those two, it's all Halo weapons. Well, I've got that's a massive weapon you got there. It and is, these actually the, can be picked up. They can be, they will hold themselves together. Great builds. 
I've got the Halo 3 sniper rifle, minus the scope, haven't quite finished that yet. Right. Which this is, is a new build this year, I believe. This was the big one for this year, yeah. So work in progress, still to come, more? Yeah, still a bit more to do on this, a few details to clean up, scope to add. Yep. And then the old SMG, assault rifle, battle rifle. I've had them for a few years, but I keep refining them, getting them better and better. And as we move right along... Have you got results. the one that actually fires? None of them fire, unfortunately. Have I, you seen them that they I can could, do that? I could do that, but I want them to look right more than fire. And okay. also, don't want to get in more trouble than I already do with some of these. <laughs> I've got the Mad Max Interceptor, which I've brought back again. Um, and that's still doing all right. Engine details, interior, rear suspension. Yeah. Springs might be getting a little tired there. And then I completely reworked my Normandy from Mass Effect for this year as well. So it's a better build, holds together better, just. Um, the engines move on that one as well, so... Yeah, it's as, I've tried to get it as detailed as I can while keeping that curve shape. That's really the big challenge of this one. And I did the Mako tank from the game as well to go with it. Plus a few Bionicles here and there just to keep them in. Jim has been a very long-standing Bionicle fan since its first inception. Long-standing Bionicle fan. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. I love what you bring to the tables. Thank you and very thanks much. for being a part of Brisbane. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Happy to be part of it. We're yeah. going to complete this loop around now. Uh, we're moving on to the HMAS Vampire. Alan, how you doing? Yeah, Back great today, yes. Well, so you and your son have built this together, I believe. Is that yes, correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, what I like is your son joined as a Brisbane's junior member and he's just had his 18th birthday so now he's one of our adult members as well. Yes he is. Uh, t talk us through your build, what, what's going on here? Oh, okay, so it's a project that uh, with um, both me and my son yep. been hoping to do uh, for the last eight years yes. uh, when we first uh, visited the actual ship in Sydney. So, so it's a how long is this all up? Like that? So this is uh, 2.96 meters. Yeah, nearly three meter long ship, yep. All built modular, so you can bring it together. Yes, that's right. Yep. I think um, we found we found something longer than you, Nick. It is. It's, <laughs> it's about, I, I could lie down within this ship, I believe. So, how how long have you been working on this? So uh, we've been sort of collecting parts for the l last eight years, but made right. the decision to build it uh, during the COVID lockdown, 2020. <laughs> I love this how you got your son there trying to show the I whole. I like his captain's hat personally. Yes. That's right. So the attention to, to detail, the and you've kept the scale all right as well. Yeah, so it's built to a minifigure scale. Yep. So roughly about one one in forty. Nice. Oh wow, yeah. that is quite large. It's a fantastic build, mate. You should be very proud, and we're very happy to have it here at the BBX show. It's a stunning piece, mate. One yeah. of the things that I will point out for uh, our builders, and Nick, you probably went through the same process. Uh, one of the challenges you get to uh, see if you can end up on LEGO Masters TV, a uh, different LEGO program than BBX TV here, <laughs> uh, is the build for the making a sphere out spheres. of LEGO is, is, is a real challenge. Was that a challenging part of the build or did you find that something that was easier to sort of finish off the detailing? Um, well, uh, it was challenging but there, there, there are examples of something similar and I, I've done something similar uh, in terms of the sphere for another build of mine which was uh, the yep. Chewbacca's uh, uh, gun, I guess. The crossbow gun? Oh, yeah, the yes. crossbow gun, yes. yes. Okay. So, so there was a smaller scale, so that sort of helped me uh, make this shape for, 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 the, for the radar domes. We should be very, very proud, mate. It's absolutely stunning. Yep. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. Thanks for talking to us. Okay, Cheers. fantastic. Appreciate it. All right. Now we're nearly completing the loop here, Harrison. How's it been for you? Oh, mate, it's been such a fantastic show with such great variety. It's been nice to have the punters in this building instead of online like we had to go for some of our uh, streams during the COVID era. And it's just nice to be back building LEGO with people who love LEGO. It's a great space. Diane, do you want to finish off with us on, on your table here? What have you brought to the Brisbane Brick Show? <laughs> um, we have bought um, a scene at the ballet. Yes. Now I should point out that um, Lauren and I uh, collaborate build right but she's really the, the master builder here I'm basically the person who bankrolls it all <laughs> ah yes you're but, the most um, important you and I'll part. talk later <laughs> <laughs> 
But um, my daughter is 27. She has autism. She yep. doesn't. She's not pretty much non-verbal. Okay. So this gives you an insight on how she sees the world. She goes to the ballet often. So this um, uh, scene at the ballet is yep. uh, what she sees. What's really the um, orchestra pit. Uh, what, what, what ballet do you think we're at? What yeah, is well, which? Have a look. Oh, and tell me if you can guess it. Uh, the Swan. Swan Lake. Come on, guys! You could do better than that. Look, to be fair, normally when I am at the ballet, I am well, not balleting. So how about, teach, teach how, us. how about if I refer to the nurse up here and someone on a balcony and, and, a, and a young Romeo man? And Juliet. You got it. Oh, you got shoot. it. I didn't know that was even a ballet. It's, so it's, I'm it's learning diet, something today. It's a diet straight song. That's how I know. <laughs> so funny story behind this one is one day we were uh, exhibiting it and uh, this man was getting incredibly excited and bit antsy and I said are you okay and he said I've just got to ask just got to ask um, how come this conductor here has got blonde hair and I said because the conductor of the ballet has got blonde hair and he said that's my sister and so you know he jumps on FaceTime and he's there with his phone saying look you're famous look you're famous you're in the ballet oh lovely <laughs> so that was pretty cool I it's love amazing how it has that ability with to track. connect with different people in different yeah. ways yeah. and so this is a set isn't it that, that Lego no, brought no, out you no, knocked no. this, this one up this is um, a, another set that Lauren built Lauren plays the piano right and um Basically, she decided to try and make a, a, a piano, and this came out before, or we built this before Wonderful. the set. Yeah, right. Um, but I just love her little girly touches, like the magenta yes. seat and the um, script music being from the Friends. Oh, not even girly. That's one of my favourite colours in real life. It is. Not that I've ever done a build with it, though. I just love how Lauren just uses her cool in the feet. And, and more finally, of that drum like a gold we were learning about earlier as well on the interior of that piano. Does the lid actually lift up? It sure does. There we go, look at that. Closes, sheet music goes down. That is oh, absolutely fantastic. That's so, uh, great. No yeah. wonder I thought it was an official Lego set for a second. Well, very we did have well the Lego ideas for a while and it got many votes, but not enough. Things okay. are a bit easier these days than back then. But this one's a truly remarkable one, despite the fact that I've been running maintenance on it. Right. So it's Royal Britannia, hey? Uh, quite appropriate given the weekend. And yes, the we just um, lost the Queen. Okay. We really Along wish we could the King, fly this at half mast, but you know. We're doing our best with what Lego allows yeah. us. Um, but what this is, it's not true to. Um, the layout in the No, way. correct. You've but just it put, is incorporated true to a little it. souvenir that Lauren brought home, which okay. was round, and she, she just disappeared into the uh, Lego room and started building it on a base plate. Um, so she took a 48 by 48 base plate and tried to replicate that little souvenir. Souvenir. Correct. And, correct. and, and uh, shame you don't have the souvenir here to compare. I have a photo to, of it if you want to see it. That's but, um, okay. We'll, we'll just yeah, go through but, um, the build. But basically, the uh, eye. had a bit of help for this one because that was a little bit beyond her at the time. Right. From Does that Nicholson. rotate too? Uh, no, right. um, but Dean really helped with that. Okay. So thank you, Dean. <laughs> um, but the rest she did from I basically. Yeah, I love Big the phone ben, box. Phone <laughs> box, the bus, Tower of London. I personally like how she made the um, Tower Hill. Um, different sort of darkish colours because if you see it in real life it's not all one colour, it's right. all little spectrums. It looks like real rock work sort of style yeah, of the building exactly. with the stone, it's very well done. Yeah, and, and little reminders of how she, having autism, actually sees the detail in things. Absolutely. No, it, it, um, I wish a... she was here but she, I've given her a sleep in. That's she's okay. going to work tomorrow. Well, at least someone got one. Sorry? I said at least someone got one. They work us TV hosts to the bone. Yes. Uh, you back? probably have come across Lauren in some way because if you've ever bought bricks from Toy Bricks or, or, uh, in, or the brick shop, she's the one that packs them, uh, sorts them all out. Right. There you um, go. So she nice works segment. tomorrow. So thanks for coming around. Thanks, thanks for talking to us. Hello, Carlo. Would you like to run us through your bills? Grab the mic. Tell us what you got going on here, Carlos. Let's start here. What do we got? What we got here? We have. Uh, I put the horse track down here. So the horse track. Put that over there. 
We are in the middle of a horse race, so here we got Ruby Scoop Shoulder. It's the third generation made by uh, Dave Gilder, so it's uh, NXT and EV3, so now we got the Mindstorm. It will actually read in the colors, and most likely it gets it correctly. So we will look at the colors and we will scan through and we will have, a, hopefully, a soul. You can solve Ruby's Cube quicker than I can. I can't do one, so that robot's yep. probably smaller than me. And what's this Ruby's Cube sitting up here? Is that coach says I... It's sold, uh, it just shows a sold cube, so it's just the colors that's been okay. placed in here. So colors of the cube has been added up to the place. When we come back, it's nearly solved it already. Let's not miss this uh, final moment. So it's turning, spinning, flipping the cube, doing all the moves required to come on, get it right, better not muck it up. It is fantastic how it does that. Uh, oh, I can see it coming together. Surely it's close now. It's doing a good well, job. Got the oh, right colors it's super. To form. Just, it's got those side pieces to fill in. Because I believe solving a Rubik's Cube is a maths equation, so the robot should be very good at that. And there we have it. All done and dusted. Well, well done. That is absolutely fantastic. Yep. And Moving this, on though to the horse race. The horse race. The horse race is inspired by Russell. So he did uh, Doom the race course. And, uh, Just run them from there, run them from there quickly. So we're going to run it from here, we're yep. going to have a start. So Because they've got short time span. Yeah. So we are inspired by All Russell's Doomba race course, and now we move into the Horse number A. one looks dead tired. I'm going number three. Yeah, Come on, number three. Number one's got good chances because he's just bones, you know. So he's, he's a he's, dead horse. He's not going to win, sure. What about number four? He's doing great. Horse. We can't rake the race, so... Uh, number four go. looks like he's going to get him a shot on the line. It's yeah. 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 Four's there. Oh, four's All right. Line, yeah. I'm sure the kids love this part of your display here, Carlos. So, Nick, you were able to tell it. That's inspired by what al album? Record album? Well, Abbey Road, I guess. Of course it is, yeah. But there's only two... It's a brick road, brick, of course. It's a brick road and yeah, it's only two brick heads instead. And also it's inspired by the Lego Masters with the sign. Ah, the one yes. that did the cross design on the display when they were going to take it back. I remember that. The big sign, the little minifigure walks across. Now, I love this art gallery. The this, art gallery is all... This is your... Credit, it's credit to Penny. Penny's, yes. Yes, and Your see, lovely wife. We, we got all the scream, the... Look, the Mona Lisa's getting Lisa, carried yeah. through the building. I think there's robbery going on here. Well, oh, it's but, coming out of the building, yes, yeah. right. So the highlight is that people come around there discussing and all the pieces there and they can recognize there are the some pieces. of the uh, classic masters at the back there as well that I've noticed. Yep. So, so run us through them all so that we do know. We've got a Van Gogh with the Starry Night, is that right? Yes, it is. Good. What else have we got? Fantastic set Lego just released for that as yeah. well. That style. I mean, the Mona Lisa, cool. but I mean, the, the, the pieces there, you know, uh, Isabella, she was really good promoting it yesterday. Isabella, yeah. she's 13, you know. And she's That's your daughter, it. and is this her yes. build she's displaying? No, 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 no Duplo, the Duplo is Penny as well. Yes, of course. So uh, it's just going through the latest Duplo, it goes around the world. So we're different uh, regions. They're so. bringing out so many more animals now, aren't oh, they? Oh, that raccoon, he's cool. Yeah. I mean, animals, I think the red panda was the one we were really most excited about the red pen the where's that where's that that's china isn't it yeah but where is it he's up in the trees over there i can't see him you got oh, yeah, in those trees there we go yeah. the red oh, pandas I get no, the girls are all into red pandas these days that's uh the latest yeah. critter all right it used to be otters uh, or llamas i think before that thank you very much would you like to be part of bridge bricks live tv Mitchell? yes talk us through your build here you can take the microphone tell us what you've brought to the table? So I built the Minecraft. Yes, the Minecraft. Very popular theme here. At I did both builds with my dad's help. Yeah, that's cool. Stand up and tell me about this little critter, what you built here. An axolotl. Okay. And that's inspired by something that you saw online, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and built that one as a, as a mock, we yeah. call them. Yep. Now, I have to say, Lego runs in this family as well, as the Seahouse and family, as this is the daughter of the builder of Hogwarts, who we saw earlier. Yes. Now, interesting use of the split system using the piece of the glass, glass plane to put in I the... love that, but what I actually like more than that use is actually how nicely all of the colours of the green shades of Lego blends in that sort of back lookout there. It's fantastically done. Yeah, the cliff heads pop in there and you've got the grey rocks below the water with the green and the browns above, so it really gives it that dual zone element, doesn't it? In it water really and does. out of the water. And does your lighthouse have a light and does it work? Yeah. Light me up. There we there go. There we go. Well done. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming to Brisbane and displaying with us.
Well, I did have a chat with you yesterday about all of your modulars. So this one's been made up from, from this original book set, hasn't it? And you've actually mocked several of the modulars that we saw earlier. So they're just another way to represent those modular buildings and have them on display. We've got a lot a of these train are also station. custom built by her as That's well, correct. I believe, Nick. Yep. Uh, and especially as we get down this Sonic's section. House. Very popular at the shows. And uh, as well as the use of the Lego Friends uh, sets that have been Yeah, upscaled. I think her, her son put this one in there. It's one of the... For the school as well as yes. the shop on the end there. And the new bus has made an appearance on the road. I quite That's... like, however, more importantly, the, the Brisbane bus, which has been recreated at the other end. It's well quite spotted, fantastic. well spotted, and the new grocery truck as well. Yes, a right. very cool display. Now this is the most interactive display that we have. Uh, it actually won the award yesterday for most interactive display. Every obviously this the, is using more of the Mindstorms and NXT stuff that we were looking it is, at. And that Rubik's we'll, we'll interrupt Damien here. He's very busy with the kids. He's very hands-on. Damien, grab the mic. Welcome to Brisbane TV. How are you going? Good. Talk us through what you've got here, because I know it's very hands-on, so we'll keep the kids involved. And So we've got a bunch of stuff the kids can play with. We've got a music machine where the kids are making their own music with different coloured dominoes. That's a whole so heap cool. of uh, automata where the kids can actually spin it and see. I've got... Uh, Especially the big kids. The big kids. So really lay into it. Yeah, it's nice and strong. Slowly. Yeah, we can do it as fast as you want. So lots of different mechanisms to try and you know teach see, kids how see different how work. the engines work and different cog ratios. Yes. We've got some different games over here: checkers, uh, noughts and crosses, uh, battleships. Um, that again, the kids can play I with. I love how hands-on it is, and congratulations! Yep. Again Everyone can for, touch everything for winning that that brick award. Thank you so much. We have a memory game where they've got to memorise the pattern going through, and this little girl's doing really well. She made it to the end. She Yay! just won. Got, Good got, job. Well got done. The prize. You finished, yeah, go again if you want to. My memory's not fantastic for anything other than Lego nice. facts, so I'm not gonna give Simon that a go. Simon says what? Oh, what? <laughs> Alrighty, and then this one here is our domino sorter. So if I pop a whole heap of different dominoes Wait. in, Do it. like yes. that. Let's go <laughs> dominoes, dominoes, dominoes. All right, that'll do for the moment. If I press the button right. here, it'll go through, figure out what color is, and then sort the dominoes. Oh, that's I need that awesome, for my parts at home. I know. A part sorter, yes. And then we've got ourselves our Rubik's Cube you solver. You build one of those that works and you sell millions. So this one is not my design. This one was done by David Gilday, but a very nice Rubik's Cube solver. It'll go through and it'll scan each we one of the colours. We just the earlier version down at Carlos's That's end. That's the updated the, version. That's the updated so this one. This one. is the older one. Right. Sorry, wrong, wrong way around. So yeah, it'll go through and solve it. Marble maze, great thing about this is I always encourage people go home. This is something you can go do. Go home, play. This is this, this is, is something that you can make at home. Yes, absolutely. And you can go all the way through if you're very lucky. And he's he's not very lucky, but we'll get there eventually. And the final one the end there is my foray into mocks. Everything that I have done for the last ten years has all been mechanical and that's me trying to have a go. And making Welcome something look to the mock team. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. So You've I'm got really great proud expression of that. in that uh, in that head there. That's that big dragon. So and yeah, I also very love the that. charred tree. And yeah. to do it on one base plate, you can strain yourself and go. Oh, I'm just going to get this uh, thing it's, nailed. It's, it's one and a third. Oh, you got a little. little there's, a, there's some extension out there. Yeah. Thank you very much, Damien. Thanks for running us through this one, mate. No fantastic. Worries. All right. Cheers. Hey, Damien, how are you going? Hey, mate. Here we yeah. A random master. celebrity guest. We've got an extra Lego master. Yeah, we're on oh, Brisbane's right. live. We're on TV. TV. We're live. Yeah. We're live. Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, say, say hello. Something, haven't I? <laughs> okay, we might put it on YouTube later. It's not actually live. Oh, we're going to do a bit of right. editing. We can pretend it's yes. live. Yes. With right. the magic of editing, yes. And, uh, this is almost the end of our run through all the displays of the show. We're just going to go exit through the uh, the buy area. So Ooh. thank you for running into us. I'm going to catch up with you after I get off camera. All right, that sounds so good. Live. Over at the waterfall. Yes. All right. Thanks Enjoy. for coming to the show. Right. Oh, Appreciate pleasure. it. No, it's been we'll great. see you around. Good, see ya. good time. Alrighty, let's finish this off, Nick, with power, power out. Walk so through. after you've been to the Lego show, the highlight, of course, is where you can actually buy Lego on your way out the door. So this just shows you the space that we're in. Uh, My budget has uh, not gone so well being so close to Lego retail, I have to admit. There is a bonus of displaying. You get a few Briz Bricks bucks that you can spend on Lego or food. So if no you come food was bought part of Briz Bricks, you get little cashiolas like this where you can go and 
spend your money on the way out the door. So it's we've got several little, stores uh, here. Thank you to all the exhibitors who spend time setting up all of these displays. And, and doing thanks things. everyone for watching at home. Um, look, we hope to see you live in person at a BBX show. Or even can't make it today. Events. Yeah, or it, we have several shows. Just go on the website, look up Briz Bricks, find us online. If you're interested, come and join the club. We meet monthly. We're also um, now on Instagram and TikTok. Awesome. So All the socials. Go. Cheers, guys. I've been Harrison. That's Nick. Thanks from Brisbane TV.